This episode of The Gaming Outsider is brought to you by Ewin Racing, the home of the best heavy-duty gaming chairs. I can tell you from personal experience that I've never sat in a more comfortable chair at my desk. Ewin Racing has chairs for gamers of all sizes, too. As a Gaming Outsider listener, you can get 20% off your purchase using our promo code TGO at ewinracing.com. Ewin Racing, the best gaming chairs out there. How y'all doing? This is Kenny from The Walking Dead game. Well, actually, it's Gavin Hammond. I played him in the game, but it's not important. The important thing is you're listening to The Gaming Outsider. Hey there, Go listeners, and welcome to this week's episode where we're doing our monthly ritual of answering questions from the community, most of which are video game related. It's a big week in releases as both Starfield and Sea of Stars came off this week. You'll hear impressions of both as well as Zach's experience with the making of Karataka. In news, we learned the sad news of another two studios being shuttered, but there is a silver lining for at least one of those developers. This is The Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our credible community, which can be found at thegamingoutsider.com. It is Sunday, September 3rd. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and joining me, as always, are my friends, Mr. Zach Parkerson. Thrilled to be here looking at your luscious locks. <laughs> Chris Behrensmeyer. I was about to say, man, I'm, I'm glad to be here, but you are one step away from my mullet. <laughs> and Alyssa White. Uh, well, I've got longer hair than Scott, so I'm closer to the mullet. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you guys can't even see my hair. I'm wearing a hat. So oh, we, we can see it peeking out the yeah. back. Yeah, out the oh, back. Is that what yeah. it is? <laughs> you don't have to tell them how the sausage is made, man. We, you know, we're, this is theater of the mind here. We're producing. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> your head has a tail. Right. Uh, we are about a week and a half away, guys, from R two V two, and I am a week and a half. I'm sorry, a month and a half. I was like, yeah. I was like, whoa, dude. <laughs> oh. so, hey, where did September go? <laughs> yeah. Wake me up when September Did you ends, forget man. to shut oh. the time machine okay, off? Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, month and a half. Excuse me. It's uh, I'm getting nervous, guys. I'm getting incredibly nervous. Um, unfortunately, I told you guys last week that uh, we're down to one uh, special guest. Uh, unfortunately, Sissy Jones is not available, but John St. John will be there. The voice of Duke Nukem himself uh, has uh, confirmed. I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting him again and uh, introducing him to everybody. It's going to be an awesome Awesome time. Saturday, October 14th. I uh, found out also we're going to have, we, we had mentioned we're going to have VR there, but we're also going to have um, Guitar Hero competition. Uh, Aaron Hughes, one of our listeners, is providing Guitar Hero for everybody to do little competitions. I haven't played Guitar Hero in a while, so that might be kind of fun to jump into that to see what happens. Are you going oh, to compete? I don't know if I'll have time, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could, I could compete and lose real quick, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then the sad thing is, is I don't feel like I can practice up because I don't even know if I have a plastic guitar. I, I gave them to a friend of mine and they, uh, and the ones he has just don't work. And CB's giving me a look like he has a bunch of them. I didn't realize he had a bunch of them. You, you've been to my house. Yeah, but you have a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> I can't memorize your collection. Get on uh, it. Yeah. Right. Right. But, uh, so that's gonna be fun. Also. Uh, big news this week. One of the things I don't really talk about is we're going to have a bunch of giveaways, like raffles and, and like gift baskets and prizes from stuff in the community. And uh, I haven't talked about it in a while, but uh, you guys can see my E-Win racing chair in the background there. Uh, the company has contacted me and, and is going to sponsor the show by giving us one of those chairs to give away at the convention. So if you'd like to win one of these fancy dancy, fancy dancy, is that right? <laughs> fancy dancy. Gaming chairs, there's going to be one that you'll be able to sit in uh, to try it out, and then uh, one lucky person will get to take it home at the end of the convention. So, uh, I was, yeah. I was going to say, Scott, we got to get together so we can get that photo shoot of you on the bearskin rug so you'll have those to sign, too. Yeah, make it oh happen. Yeah, who's going to pay for a signed oh, picture? Scott Clark in a gold Speedo on a bearskin rug. <laughs> what, what if it's just him not wearing anything but his legs are crossed in the Ewan racing chair? Oh, I'm sure. I'm Thank sure you. that would sell. We're, we're trying it. to help. I'll we're trying to it. help Ewan <laughs> Racing sell these chairs, not scare them away. I mean, Alyssa just volunteered to be in the chair. So, <laughs> oh, there you go. She's our eye candy, right? She's yeah. the only one that you know halfway good looking here. She's right. much more than halfway. Good I was about looking, to be like halfway. No, no, no. I'm talking about me. The three. <laughs> Bless of us. your heart. Ah. <laughs> uh, this is your first time here. <laughs> we apologize. We do talk about video games. I promise. And speaking of. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the games we've been catching up on before uh, we get to the news. 
Zach, still plugging away at Grand Theft Auto 4, I see. Right, yeah. And here in the Gaming Outside, we're talking about recent releases, uh, GTA 4. I, I, I'm continuing to play it. It's continuing to be excellent, but um, I really want to talk about the you remember the heist mission, right? Well, back in the day, that was the that was the talk of the game, right? Sure. Yeah, I, don't know. I guess not. Anyway, it was really uh, it's still really great, but it's it's funny to play it in a post GTA Five world since the whole that whole game is based around heists, right? And it's just like you're like, dang, like this is just the uh, this is just the kernel of the idea that would later become you know picking out your crew members and everything. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's still really fun. the The game is uh is more human than I think people give it credit for. Man, it's just a great game. Nice. Loving it. Did I tell you guys that I jumped back into Super Mario Odyssey a little bit? No. no. Why just get ready for Wonder? Did uh, you miss well, Charles little... Martinet that much that you had to? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I uh, just was on the plane and I just got tired of playing whatever. I think I was playing Ember Knights. I had just played that game to death. And I uh, just wanted something to just kind of relax and chill and just enjoy myself and not be critical of anything and just jump back into that game. And that game still is very, very charming and just a lot of fun to play. I still think that the Galaxy games are superior and just overall design. I just think that that, kind of, that way that that game works is, is great and just wondrous. But uh, really looking forward to Wonder next month. I can't believe that's only like a month and a half, two months away. So. Right, yeah. Elephant Mario. Getting- I don't know what that means. I genuinely like. I haven't watched all the videos because I guess there were some interviews with the de- with the developers at Nintendo. I think there was a new about there's a new direct, means. right? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not get a chance to catch that, unfortunately. Well, yeah, but, you're uh, gonna play it anyway. Does, uh, yeah. Does, like for real. Does Peach have an elephant form? Are we about to see a new Bowsette uh, claim the internet? Uh, oh, <laughs> let's no. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, you know, no body shaming, right? Absolutely. So, absolutely. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump into the week's news. A couple new trailers to talk about. First off, G.I. Joe Wrath of the Cobra coming to Switch and PC the first quarter of next year. Also, we got a, I I can't call it a trailer, but a a teaser for an update to Power Wash Simulator. It is a Back to the Future special pack. It's going to be $7.99. Also, in bigger news this week, some video game companies are the next target by the SAG-AFTRA uh, uh, union for a potential strike. They're trying to get certification for that. Final Fantasy 16 is getting DLC as well as a PC version. Uh, in sad news, developer Volition it, w- it was being shut down by the Embracer Group, and also Me 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 Games is shutting down as well. So not uh, a ton of positive news here. But uh, Chris, let's start with you, man. Where what story would you like to talk about? Oh uh, well, I guess uh, we'll talk about uh, developer volition getting okay. shut down by Embracer. This is a problem, man. Like I don't want to talk about any of these. Like it's all just depressing, right? <laughs> a little bit. Um, yeah. 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 So they're getting shut down. Their most recent game was Saints Row. Uh, they'd also done Descent, Free Space, and Red Faction. However. Uh, they're like, this past June, uh, Volition has said, this past June, Embracer Group announced a restructuring program to strengthen Embracer and maintain its position as a leader in the video game industry. As a part of the program, they evaluated strategic and operational goals and made the difficult decision to close Volition effective immediately. Uh, statement continued on, to help our team, we are working to provide job assistance and help smooth the transition for our Volition family members. We thank our customers and fans around the world for the love support over the years. Uh, you will always be in our heart. Uh, Embracer still does have the rights to Saints Row and F- Red Faction. Um, do you, Doesn't that feel gross? Yeah. They're like, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Thanks for giving us things. But here's like, the thing. Is that just going to be the next thing is like, you know, buy these companies, keep their IP, get rid of the team, and then do whatever you want that, with the IP? That's, I mean, didn't we all just celebrate the Dead Space remake earlier this year? That's yeah. true. Yeah. Now you're making me feel guilty, man. <laughs> just saying. Well, <sighs> here's the thing. The, that last Saints Row, uh, I had no desire to play it. I really don't know anybody that played it. I played Alyssa it. Alyssa did. She liked oh. it. Okay, so. Oh, it was about six out of ten, I would say. It's not bad, but it wasn't great. Yeah, it's just, <sighs> there There are times when certain companies need to go the way of the Dodo, but. You think Volition is one of them? I didn't say that. Okay. I said that there I'm are listening. times. Okay. Um, but it does seem to be increasing at an ever-growing rate. I, I mean, Microsoft's done it. 
Nintendo's done it. Sony's done it. Embracer's done it. I guarantee you Tencent's done it. Mm -hmm. Um, This is the bad side of all these acquisitions that, uh, you know, that, that we talk about, you know, Zach always looks down at those as, as those as negative things. And I tend to look at it more positively. And this is where Zach is right because (laughs) this kind of thing happens. Um, This is a bummer. I've actually met the lead AI designer at Volition. He's a friend of a friend of mine. He's been here playing cards with us before. And I actually reached out to my friend to ask him if he had found work. And he said that he's actually uh, got a line for another gig already. That is potentially an even better spot for him than he had at Volition. But he was there for 15 years and just got laid off on Thursday. Yeah. So could you imagine working for a company for that long? You feel kind of secure in what you're doing, and then just all of a sudden nothing's there. Now, granted, it sounds like he might be landing on his feet, but I don't. what about everybody else? I mean, that's it's funny because I did have that happen. The, you did? The last ambulance company I worked for. That is funny. Yeah. Ha ha. <laughs> so you're like, oh, yeah, I mean, can you imagine? I'm like, yeah, it's funny because I, I did have that happen. Yeah. Never yeah. believe your corporation. They tell you they care about you. Oh, no. It is no. not true. Mm-mm. Every job I've ever had, I am just a number. Right. Every job. Every job. They're, they're always like, this is the best group of employees we've ever had. Anyway, 60, you got to go. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> Except for you six. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I mean, who knew, guys? That making a Saints Row game that no Saints Row fan wanted to play, and then being openly antagonistic towards those fans, would uh, re- would result in a flop of a game. Yeah. Who could have seen that coming? <laughs> I, now that, you're making it sound like it's their fault. I it was a strange decision to make that game, and they they were open in that it was their decision, not Embracers, to make the game that they made. That is weird. That's bad. That's bad business. No, they don't deserve mm-hmm. to get shut down. Of course, of course not. You know, they, they made some absolute bangers. Red Faction 2, that was my multiplayer game of choice on the original Xbox. Love that mm-hmm. game. Volition's great. I mean, they haven't made a game I've enjoyed in a long time. But that's, you know, that's that doesn't mean that these people should be out of a job, of course. And the, and the think- terrible part about Volition getting shut down, you know, I mean, 30 years obviously is historic, but they're also in Champaign, Illinois. Like, there's not a lot of nearby companies to, to swoop people up. Right. So if you can't find mm-hmm. a remote job, like your option is either new industry or uproot your entire family. That is devastating. That that's terrible. Or high voltages in Hoffman Estates. Are they still are they still open? Yeah, high voltage, Nether Realm. Yeah, Nether Realm. Um, there's a couple others. But here's the thing: like you, fi- fifteen years. Like like your friend alone has worked there for fifteen years. You'd think some of these people would be like, hey, maybe we should just start our own company, and make the games that we want to make. Well, well I think I that's a we're... risky endeavor. Yeah. Just so's being unemployed. Sure. I mean, I don't know. That just feel that feels pretty easy to say from our position. Just yeah. start a new company, man. Well, I mean, it seems to be the ever growing thing. It's just start a new company, I mean, bang out that, a game, get bought up. I've right. been in that position. You know, my when I were when I was in insurance, the office in my town shut down, so I had the option to either start my own practice or start my own office or leave the company. I was had been doing it for what like a just over a year. I was not ready to like start an office and everything. That's a that's a big scary thing, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I I wasn't man enough to do it. I'm not saying that these people aren't either, but that's a that's a that's a big scary thing to to consider. It is, but I mean, you could pretty much cherry pick the talent that you want. Right. Maybe. I mean, I, well, that was going to be my question is, I know that Saints Row wasn't well received. I honestly don't remember more recent games they had before that. But... Was it this, Agents this... of Mayhem, right? Oh, Didn't yeah. They do that? Yeah. That oh, was yeah. That one wasn't, that wasn't very well liked either, yeah, was they, it? No. no. At, least, at least it was released somewhat finished, unlike Saints Row. Mm. Well, and see, that's, that's kind of why I was like, there is times where certain developers, like, it, they just seem to run out of gas. Like, no fresh ideas. People get too complacent in their positions. Well, whilst they've go. been clear that the, the Saints Row game didn't have any Embracer influence, I bet Embracer did say, yeah, but you are going to make a Saints Row game. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that is completely fair and valid. But yeah, mm-hmm. Agents of Mayhem was one of the worst. It's a, one of the, it was like five bucks, you know, the month after it came out or whatever, right? Like that right. game yeah. did not do well. 
I think um, I got a code for that game. I was excited, and then I played it. <laughs> Excitement maybe, disappeared. And that was a Saints Row spinoff too, right? So maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe they shouldn't have put all the eggs in the Saints Row basket. I don't know. What was yeah, what, yeah. Anyway, it, I mean, it's all hindsight, twenty twenty stuff now. But I hope they do. I hope those people get jobs. I, I absolutely. My first thought was just that, like, yeah, there's high voltage in Netherrealm, but like, it's not like you're in Texas or California where there's a game developer or Montreal. Whereas a game developer right. every other block, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, that's that still sucks. blows my mind because like you look at Chicago and it should be ripe, right, for that kind of thing. People don't like winter, I guess, or like Chicago, <laughs> Milwaukee, Madison. Like you have three very large towns, with very large talent pools. I wonder how many people outside of us Illinois residents are aware of Madison and Milwaukee. I mean, I've heard of them, but I I, I try to Jason. educate myself. Yeah. Seeing as I'm from Alabama, so just you know, you think about all those people that call the Midwest flyover. Thank you for states. laughing at that, Scott. <laughs> uh, I, guess I, I guess I missed it. She's like, I'm from Alabama. I have to make sure I know stuff. <laughs> Got to know them <laughs> words in them cities. Yeah, I feel like Milwaukee is pretty well known right. as a like nationwide. I I mean, they've got in. I know this doesn't mean anything to you, Zach, but they do have a major league sports team. They have multiple, multiple. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, then I yeah, I stand corrected then. Um, Madison, Madison, I could give you. I mean, yeah. they're 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 kind of a college with, town with the largest like college football following out there. Oh, the Badgers. Like, well, wh- what is the crossover between college football fanatics and video game developers? Quite a large <laughs> one. That's why they're bringing back the NCAA games. I don't think it's quite a large one, man. I think that I think might... you're wrong. I man. think you All are right. dead wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, the NCAA football return is going to be massive. That is. No, that I, is. That that announcement was on par with like FIFA. No, I'm yeah, sure. I'm, I'm sure the game will be large. I just don't, I don't think there is a huge Venn diagram of game developers to college football fanatics. That's oh, all I, I was see. saying. I see. What you're yeah. saying. That they okay. that there would be such a college football but, fan that they know all the cities that have a team. I, it seems hard to believe for me. I, oh, gotcha. But what I was saying is UW Madison does have a very large tech division. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh, let's move on, Zach. You got a story you want to talk about this week? Well, yeah, I guess I may as well. Me, me, me. You came I into mean. my life, and now you're breaking my heart. Uh, yeah, me, me is shutting down. They were developers of uh, Shadow Game with the Curse Crew, which just came out. Shadow Tax, Explained as a Shogun, Desperado 3, Tinker, the last city of color, which a uh, 3D platformer they made first. Uh, they said, after release of Shadow Gambit, we decided it was the right time to prioritize our well-being and pull the brakes instead of signing up for another multi-year production cycle. Uh, the company is using the success of Shadow Gamut to pay out bonuses to everybody as they go out the door and hopefully go on to better jobs. They're helping, they're helping people find jobs, too. But yeah, man, this sucks. I just found these guys. No. Yeah. <laughs> and they make incredible stealth tactics games. It's, this is a real bummer for me. Did you never play Shadow Tactics? I have not yet, no, but I absolutely will. Yeah, I, I actually have that game. And um, it, I thought I was very impressed with what it was. It just wasn't my kind of game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after hearing you talk about this, I did. I was not making the connection that they were the same developer until I started reading this story. I was like, "Oh yeah, Zach definitely needs to play that game." Yeah, it's more it, of a stealth like the the, the the kind of stealth games they make just don't. Nobody else is making those, which I guess was uh, on their Discord and their blog post was part of the reason they shut because they just it, the reason they had to self publish Shadow Gambit and take all that risk, which it didn't sound like they wanted to do. You know, all that because a lot of work making deals with all the platform holders and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like they had just kept going to publishers begging for money to make the kind of games they make and nobody was interested in helping make those games really but isn't Shadow Game but doing pretty well sales wise I I don't know how well I know it was critically well received but I don't right. know about sales and I think I think it is selling well but I but it just sounded like um, you know based on their forum and stuff they just it was just such a massive headache and the constant anxiety of working on something for years with no mm-hmm. backup plan, you know, if, if it wasn't a hit, all those people would be out of a job and they would have no money right, to help them, you know, so I think it's just all that stress of running that studio. Now, I don't know why, you know, I guess maybe they did ask their employees, but I don't see why you wouldn't try to, like, hand it off to somebody else, you know, that works at the studio, but maybe nobody was interested in taking on that pressure, too, you know? Well, it's such a niche, niche genre, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's not like... I, I, I like like Alyssa said, I don't know the specific sales numbers, but I just kind of gather that that's not nearly as popular as as for the you know for how much 
was put into that game. I mean, just imagine the programming that it takes to put a, a game like that with, like, with how many options you have to do things. and Right, especially with voice. Shadow Gambit because you can bring in your own characters and stuff. So, like, you just have to... That's so much playtesting, I imagine. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But, 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 man, the games they make are immaculate. It's just a shame that I guess we'll only have three forever. Especially since you just discovered them. Like, I know. Somewhat yeah. recently. And now it's like, do I really... Now it's like I gotta put off Shadow Tactics. Cause, you know, like I can't play it right away. Savor it's the last, it. last one I'll have, yeah. Yeah, because you just did uh, Desperados. Desperados 3. Right. You just did uh, Shadow Gambit. Yeah, so like loving, yeah. Yeah. That's that's a bummer. I mean, on the positive note, though, it sounds like they're taking care of those people. They, you yeah. know, because of the sales, they were able to give them some bonuses and, uh, you know, as they transition to whatever new positions they're going to be doing. But uh, what, what a bummer of a news week <laughs> this week. I we're know. just reporting yeah. sad news. Um, yeah, it's well, just a, it's just unfortunate. Let's move on to the next sad story. All right, Alyssa. Actually, I'm going to talk about the only positive one. I guess it's positive depending on your point of view. Final Fantasy 16 is getting DLC as well as a PC version. Producer mm -hmm. Naoki Yoshida revealed both during a panel at PAX West this weekend. There's not much details, just that both are in development, and he hopes to have more details before the end of the year. I feel like the PC version was inevitable, right? Wasn't he talking way earlier on that he had hopes for a PC version of the game at some point? And I, I feel like I remember reading about it. I feel like I remember that as well. Yeah. Right, I think so, this. I think the same article points out some interview where they talk about the PS5 exclusivity was only six month window anyway. Gotcha. The thing that makes me nervous about potential DLC for a game like Final Fantasy 16 is the game already has some of the worst side quests I've ever seen in a video game. Right. So what are you going to add to this game to make me want to dish out some extra money to play it? Because I played that game for the main story. The, well, I guess you could do the thing about Leviathan. It's got to have to be because wasn't that like in a painting and yeah, yeah. Oh, so they, they, hint, they, they hinted, yeah, well, they hinted that summon, mm -hmm. yes. Um, but uh, I don't know, dude. The last thing I wanted after beating Final Fantasy 16 was more Final Fantasy 16. I was kind of the same way because you know how when you finish a game and you're kind of on a high on it, even though it sometimes it is a grind, and you're like, I'm gonna go ahead and go for that platinum trophy, sure. And then I went and looked at the trophies and I was like, I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. <laughs> Never I, mind. I'm out. Pretty much. But I, yeah, I, I doubt I will be diving back into Final Fantasy. I no. Just... Yeah, I, I like the, I like the game less less than uh, you or Brandon did on the spoiler cast. But I mean, when I beat it, I didn't. I felt relief. You know, I was like, oh, finally, finally, it's over. Right. Especially, you know, the the way they. I don't think there's a spoiler. The way they give you like about 16 side quests right before the last mission for no reason. Oh yeah, that was a ridiculous yeah. amount of side quests. Yeah, and they're all like, and those ones aren't like, you know, the side quests are like, hey, here's all the ending to character arcs. <laughs> there, there was a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. They're like, oh, finally we get some side quests that matter, but I just want to see the end of the game. Right. Yeah. I thought you give me the the good side quests at the worst possible time. Right. Exactly. Uh, so the story I'm going to talk about then is the uh, the SAG AFTRA potential strike. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, they are currently just seeking approval to do a strike. Um, the last uh, strike that happened from SAG AFTRA was on July 13th. That one was against major TV and film companies. Obviously, they're targeting video game companies now. So here's kind of how it breaks down. There's a contract between the union and video game companies that expired back in November. It was extended, and there's supposed to be new talks resuming on September 26th. So that's coming up here pretty quick in the next, well, this month. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, their demands, they want an 11% retroactive increase in rates for video game performers, then 2 4% increases after that. Now, this is the same demands that, that they gave on the film and TV uh, side of things. And they also want protections from AI, because there's a lot of companies that are, you know, using that AI to reproduce certain actors' voices and then using them without paying those actors, which I can't understand why that's not why that's legal. I, I truly don't get that at all. Because it's not um, illegal yet, right? You have to actually put the law on the books. Apparently, which yeah. is just crazy to me. Like We have copyright things, but how is that not... I don't know. It's just, it just seems like a, a, a huge gap that should have been remedied well before this when the whole AI thing started. But are, you actually are you asking politicians to do their job? 
Because I'm <laughs> yeah. not sure it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they also want rest periods and safety protections when they're doing their recordings, uh, an onset medic, and uh, protections against stunts. I don't know what that means. I'm assuming uh, for mo- maybe for mocap. Mocap. Yeah. Mocap. Yeah. I mean, that was um, that would be the only thing that would make sense for me for an onset medic because I'm like, if you're just recording dialogue, what do you need well, I mean, me for? Didn't John tell a story about how he like he literally like heard his voice doing a an act in a booth? Oh no no he had dental work done. Oh, is that what it was? And it was causing him pain. Um, right. Well, let's okay. say in the booth, the the rest periods and safety protection should take care of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't. I don't think you. But but the yeah, I would assume the medic would be for motion capture stuff. Since the majority, it feels you know most big budget stuff is performance capture now. Right. Okay. I I have a quick question about this. Okay. Sure. Thanks, Nick Bliskin. <laughs> um. So. 11% retroactive increase in rates for video game performers, and then four and four. And this is the same demand for TV and film actors, correct? Sure. You can't tell me that some of these act... Granted, I'm, I'm, I there still stand by... No, hang on. I still stand by the fact <laughs> that there are a lot of people in Hollywood that do not get paid enough. Uh-huh. However, this is across the board. All uh-huh. the people that make like, oh, look, Big Bang actors who make a million dollars an episode. Well, Big Bang 3 canceled a long time ago. Uh, retroactive. That's. Uh, mm, uh, mm-hmm. Retroactive. How far back is retroactive? Exactly. That's what I want to know because if these people are getting a million dollars an episode, and they're like, cool, we want another $110,000 per episode. No. My guess, you I You can take read the, the finger. Well, my, my I can't speak to I don't know I'm I'm speaking pure speculatory spec and I'm speaking speaking pure speculation right now, uh-huh. but I would have to imagine that it's for games that haven't come out yet. You know what I mean? Like if you've been if you've spent time recording your voice in a game, and the game has not released yet to see how well it does, that would make sense. Something like yep. we're gonna go back all the way to like. The last Metroid was in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. Yeah. I'm on my extra 11%. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I assumed it was too. For like stuff you're working on now, where the contract was already drafted or whatever, mm-hmm. that you get that you get an 11% increase on that. But if you finished, if you were working on Starfield, I don't think you get an 11% increase just because it came out recently. You know. Well, mm-hmm. see, I'm sitting here like 11% retroactive increase, and then 4% for current, and then another 4%. Hmm. Uh, bro. Like, if this is for, I, I think that there needs to be a cap. Like, there needs to be a cap across it. Like, Well, it, uh, uh, this is one of those situations where it depends on the company, right? Like, some companies can afford it just fine. They're making No, if we, if we want to sit here and talk about, like, tax the millionaires, tax the billionaires, eat right. the billionaires, all that crap. Like, some of the richest people all live in Hollywood. Like, after I just watched the whole thing with The Rock and Oprah, like, hey, donate money to these people in Hawaii, even though we both live there and own thousands of acres, and we could legitimately pay for all this to be rebuilt. No. No, burn them all. Burn it all down. I'm I'm so sick. To- I'm I s- disagree. I, I think every actor and director should get paid whatever they're worth. And uh, the the when you say tax the rich and tax the billionaires, I'm I personally am exclusively talking about CEOs and corporate executives. And I don't care. I don't people... care. I don't care if Kaylee Kuko gets paid a million dollars or Big Bang Theory. The Big Bang Theory doesn't exist without her. The Big Bang <sighs> Theory doesn't need the CEO of whatever the hell network to to exist. It needs the writers, directors, and actors. <sighs> but it still gets to the point that I'm like I. Uh, it, it just makes me angry because you have people that are like firefighters that are barely getting paid minimum wage, but we can't strike because it's a public service. Well, then you, I mean, but no, nope, do it. We, I, can, we can't do it. No, we do can't. It. What happens if you all, no, there's actually, the there's once? actually like what laws happens that we can't, there's actually actual all in prison? laws. Yeah, actually it, it's happened. There are laws where we actually physically cannot. I don't know. I mean, the, these people are putting themselves on the line for raises. I mean, I don't know, man. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, but here's the thing. Like every firefighter in the country is just going to all go to jail at the same time? Seems difficult to believe. I've seen dumber things happen in my life. <laughs> I'm just... It, we could, it, it just, we could go down so, a whole oh, but political believe me, we rabbit could, trail with this. It, it, it makes me... I'm not, I'm not just angry at everybody who's... Making like millions of dollars playing pretend. 
That's awesome. Good for you. But like the CEO is all of it. And right now every everybody's like, oh, we're, we're gonna we want more money. We want more money. I'm like, you're in a struggling like thing right now. Like less and less people are going to see movies. You're always talking about how movies aren't getting made because it costs too much to make them anymore. Cool, let the industry burn. That, Wait, less and less people are going to movies? I thought the movies were back on a resurgence. But Barbie just made a billion dollars. Cool, that's one. Indiana Jones lost. Well, they lost money on Indiana yeah. Jones? Yeah. Thank God. That's why, but... M- movie's but, awesome. That movie's great. Love it. I'm glad Disney lost money. Screw them. But who cares? All the show, all the time, like, TV shows are getting axed left and right because, they're, like, they're not profitable. We don't know if they're profitable. They don't share their numbers. That's true. It's part of what they're striking about. So... Hmm. I'm I'm just to the point I I I just don't care anymore. Like I, I'm tired of every it. single day turning on the news, hearing the strike like strike this or nurses are striking or teachers are striking or everybody's Where striking. Worker revolution, rise up! It's about time. It's fine. I, it, it, it was cool when Hamilton did it, but not when these actors do it. I think I never watched do. Hamilton. Didn't care. But didn't UPS just unionize and get a huge raise, which is which is great because yep. UPS had yeah. record setting profits. Only I right understand that, that should get but that. I'm just I'm tired of hearing about it anymore. Fair right. enough. Well, that's kind of the point, isn't it? Is no, because it, it just yeah. makes me not want to be involved in your industry anymore. You don't want to be involved in the video game industry anymore. It's not, but I, like I, right here, you read this and it says video game companies are the next target. Dude, I love. And you and Fran Drescher talk about the video game companies being tyr- tyrannical, like oppressors or whatever. Dudes. Yeah, by the way, I had no idea Fran Drescher was in charge of, of the union until yeah. I read oh, yeah. this article. <laughs> the nanny rallying for voice actors. I just never thought but, I'd see the day. But right there, you like you're you're we're making everything just so more expensive. But like you talk about, oh, it's no, a big not. it's a big leap to that. start a video game company. Like, and you're we're gonna make it even harder. Maybe we should move on from the pay rate, or else we'll just never move on, huh? What do you mean, move on from the pay rate? Well, I'm saying there's other stuff to talk about in their demands. It, it doesn't. It feels like we're just going to be debating this endlessly. Oh, I, I see. The, I mean, the, the protection from the AI—that's a given. Like it should be a given, but no, it's not. No, it's yeah, a given. It should be. Uh, I, I mean, it's it's being done. It's <laughs> not. It's... Right. No. Yeah. It should be. He's right. It should be a given, though. It should. Yeah, so, th- that should be a given. But of course, yes, you're right, I, Scott. That, it's not going to be a given unless they strike. Every right. every single thing, I I'm okay with that. I, my my only thing is, I just think that there needs to be a ca- like across the board CEOs. So so not just the actors, CEOs, like anybody, like you get to a certain point, and I, like the more because you talked about it uh, last week, Zach. Like, congrats, you've won capitalism. Right, yeah, you get to a certain point, trophy. no more, none. I don't care because you yeah. have, because like I said, this is across the union. That's why I said, does this include the people that do this and this? Because if you're making like, I'm Tom Cruise, I made $20 million a movie, but I want 11% more on top of that now. But, but, but the strike. Oh boy. <laughs> oh dude. Like that's how <laughs> heated I am. I am sorry. Oh, like, here we go. That would just slip through. I was just like, fuck off. Oh, well, keep them coming, man. <laughs> I don't care. I'm bad. <laughs> you said like three in like yeah. six well, seconds. It's all getting cut. <laughs> Jeez, man. I'm sorry. Oh, family friendly podcast. That uh, Chris is fired up. Right. You can this almost should... see the fire just like coming through. Oh, your dude, shirt. I'm turning red. If you can't tell, like it's making me mad. You are turning red. It's yeah, kind of crazy. Are. Uh, well, that's the thing, though, is is their point is, is they're just as mad just for different reasons. Well, the strike um, isn't about Tom Cruise, right? It's about the but it's across background the, actor. Again, it's getting, across the board. I understand that. That's f- But that's that's how a union works, though. You can't just do it for the ones that aren't super, aren't, aren't you know, superstar but actors. Right there, though. You're, those superstar actors that are making that money. If I was in the union, I'd be pissed at them. I'd be like, hey, you think, how about you hold, let some you of think, that trickle down? You think if Tom Cruise said, instead of paying me $20 million on this movie, pay me 10 and give the rest of the money to the rest of the cast, do you think any executive, do you think any Hollywood corporation would be like, sure, Tom, that's exactly what we do, instead of just pocketing that money? I don't think so, man. But I, that's why I said across the board, CEOs, anybody in management, any of them make that point. 
Yeah. That's I, it. Yeah. You're done. I agree with you. That's a physically separate point, though. But that, but if I was writing this contract, that's how it should be. Instead of just everybody who's under the union's protection makes all this extra money, regardless. That's what I don't know how you would organize it. That would be the most complicated contract ever. Could you imagine? If you make above a certain amount, you are capped. Okay. That's all you simple. Right there. Then you're going to play the game of like people turning down gigs because they don't want to go over that cap and and retire. Get some new blood in. Oh, boy. (laughs) Anyway, uh, aside from the pay rate increases, yeah, production AI, obviously. Rest periods, I would have assumed they already had. Wasn't that part of the last strike? Yeah. Was, was getting those involved? So I guess those yeah. aren't being honored. 20, 2016? But, yeah. but, last one? But, yeah, I because I, I, I read some of it uh, the other day about it, and, like the rest periods, but I wonder if they mean like longer rest periods, because if you're doing like a very long session of recording, like you can burn out your oh, right, yeah. Yeah, right. If, you're, if you're doing those, uh, the dubs for some Weeboo games, doing those <gasps> high-pitched girl noises. Uh-huh. I was thinking yeah. more of the like, oh, Cody, you know, Scott Chan, you know, that kind of thing. It's going to hurt your mm-hmm. voice after a while. Oh, Senpai. Oh. <laughs> senpai, is that teacher? It yeah. is. Well, s- senior. Uh, something, something I could go right. in a whole Japanese lesson thing, but I won't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Senpai's teacher, uh, s- senior, whatever you want. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, protection against suds. All that stuff's great. My my worry is for voice actors, and I hope this doesn't come across as offensive, but I feel like they kind of have a harder time striking because the amount of people that buy a game because of voice actors in it is a lot lower than people that watch a TV show or movie because an actor's in it. That's, that's, that's yeah, that's true. Very true. So it feels it, like a harder battle. It's it's going to be really dangerous with that too because right now the video game industry is still. Re- Covering from a three-year hiatus of everything getting delayed. So some of these smaller companies that are going to have to delay all their stuff again. Well, they could, they're recovering well, at least. I mean, dang, look at these some, look some, at the yes, success of these games. We just yeah. watched Volition shut down. Well. So I have a feeling that list is going to be growing. Well, it depends on how many Embracer purchases. <laughs> oh, yeah, layoffs, layoffs at Gearbox as well. Do you guys see that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, did, I well. heard I heard rumors of it happening. I didn't know it actually happened. Yeah. Well, Embracers, you know, they they've got to find a way to recover two billion dollars in right. valuation. So it's not <laughs> just it's make not a Barbie be, movie. Not going to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last one, by the way, the last strike in 2016 did last 11 months. So if this does actually happen, are we going to have? I don't even think we could say we're going to have a drought. Because there's just such an overabundance of games to play. Right, no such we, thing we could, yeah. we could spend 12 months just playing catch-up and be fine. Um, and that was going to be kind of my point with the industry and, and why things are the way they are is just because there's so many games coming out at one time. I mean, Zach, when you put together the releases for each episode that we're going to go over shortly when we get to the new games, you're not even putting all the games on there, right? You're just kind of... No highlighting ones that you think are are important or relevant or whatever. Look how many games are coming out every single week. It's insane. It it's nuts. I mean, I'm it's getting th- this feels like a year where I am not going to be able to finish some of these big yeah. titles like Star Wars and Hogwarts Legacy. Um there's no way I'm going to finish Starfield, but we'll get to that shortly. Um it just there's just so many games to play. I feel like that's it's not the bigger problem, but it is a a problem in terms of our companies willing to put that much money into into games that aren't necessarily going to sell as well as the companies with the, with a huge massive budget. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, and I and I don't know which companies SAG after has these contracts with. I know Activision Blizzard is one of them, um, but you know, ba- basically just assume any AAA title that has top tier voice acting for the is next that a hundred- six well, ex- months. Ex- Except for Capcom, right? Because they they famously they use scab labor for the Resident Evil yeah. remakes. Mm-hmm. But one thing is, I did notice in country. Uh, Insomniac Games was listed in this list with Activision, EA, etc. So oh. it's not just you know the big big hitters. There are some. Well, Insomniac's owned by PlayStation. Yeah. It doesn't get a lot bigger than that. Well, knowing sure. Capcom, they would just replace any English with 
Japanese voice acting. Yeah, so they did, right? Because it was, I think Matthew Mercer was the voice of Leon for a while there. And then when they were striking yeah. in 2016, they replaced him with, you know, a scab actor for the Resident Evil 2 remake. But when you say scab first... actor, does that yeah. mean like B Squad? Is that what you're, I don't know no, what I'm that saying, means. I'm saying non union. Yeah, non union. Right, so, so, you're, so you're crossing the picket line to get work. Oh, okay. Are, are you really though? Because the game's yeah. made in Japan, which is not... right. But you're you're recording your voice actor as the American. This American division of that company. Yeah, but all you have to do then is just have hey, uh, you, you live in Japan, right? You you speak English? Cool. Record these lines. That's not scab right. actor. That's just business. I guess. I guess it depends. Yeah, well, they don't really. It, utilize it's good business lot, for though. Capcom. It's kind of. It's kind of. Terrible behavior on the actors' part, right? You're not standing with the other actors. But if they're a Japanese citizen who's not, but they're not, but they weren't, but they weren't in this scenario. Well, I I understand that, but I'm saying companies that are not based in the U.S. have the ability to do that. Sure, um, but the record, but they have U.S. divisions, right? That are doing the localizations for their games. Mm -hmm. They're not localizing it in Japan. They could. They could. They're not. No. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just David Hayter's out there. You know, he, he's getting replaced. He's terrible Japanese people. I thought that's but, oh, the writer of the X Men movies. Yes, the famous <laughs> the writer of the X Men movies. That, but that's something that that legitimately does worry me about. Like some of these big companies that are not based in the U.S., they could be like, "Fine, we'll just pull out and just do it in our own country." Yeah, you could. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's the risk of striking. I guess you have to be willing to lose them. Yeah. That's it's it's a risk no matter what you do. Yeah. Wow, I did not expect that conversation to go uh, that in depth. But Scott, uh, you should go on strike as a teacher. It's, it's happened, not in my tenure, but uh, I think it was like the year before I became a teacher. They had to strike. Yeah, I and remember. my I remember my it happened in my lifetime. My my cooperating teacher, I was in student teaching. He was telling me about it because you know you don't have a choice. It's right. not like it, whatever the union decides, you have to do. And that's what's going on. That's what that's what goes on with any union. So he said that like they had to literally just not you could you couldn't like be the golden boy and just show up to work anyway and sit in your classroom with no students and like in protest or whatever. Like you could lose your job, right? And they had to literally go out and like stand on the streets with you know some people did signs and stuff, but if they didn't want to hold signs, they just stood there and had to deal with all the people driving by, give, flipping them off and everything like that. Like it's just, yeah. I mean. You've got it. You've got. You're taking a risk of losing a lot of fan base by the, doing something like that. The teachers that. would never made sense to me because I'm like, these are people looking after your kids. Shouldn't you want them as happy as humanly possible? Yeah, it but they're like more a, upset about the immediacy and people because they take they're, you to the hospital. Say that again. Yeah, people mm -hmm. that take you to the hospital. But again, if we were to ever go on strike, this country would burn. <laughs> well, maybe that's what it needs. I mean, yeah. I mean, you got a point there. You just talked That's about me letting whole... a, letting a, an entire like entertainment industry. I was like, let it burn. You're like, why? I'm like, no, let, like, just imagine hey, that's a I, whole other conversation. I, I value entertainment podcast. more than I do hospitals. <laughs> yeah. Until you get sick. I don't know. I haven't been in years, man. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to end on a positive note and uh, mention this uh, this teaser trailer that was a surprise to me. Uh, the Power Wash Simulator update for uh, Back to the Future. I really thought you were talking about G.I. Joe for some reason. I don't know about that one, man. G.I. Joe looks a little... Campy? Slow-paced for me, uh, but... Uh, it looks fun. That last G.I. Joe game was fun. The shooter. Um, it, I, I do appreciate that they put like those cartoon cinematics in between or whatever. Oh, yeah. Because they look like what I remember those cartoons looking like when I was a kid. You know what I mean? Like They're, they're, they're vastly superior but they still look like the animation style is still there, but they just look crisper. And then, uh, but the gameplay just looks like a, you know, like a double dragon clone, not even like a Ninja Turtles. Everyone's comparing it to Ninja Turtles. It looks like the, it looks a, I don't know, a little slower, but maybe that's me. But, but the thing with the back to the future, like what else do you do besides the DeLorean? Do you like go clean Hill the Valley. clock tower? Yeah. I was gonna say clock tower. Yeah. yeah. You could do the entire Hill Valley square. You could do doc Brown's, uh, Oh, his lab. lab. Mm -hmm. You could do the inside of the high school during the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. Okay. Yeah. All right. You could, you could do the, could train. You clean the train. Yeah, the train. Yeah. Oh, the train. I forgot about the train. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, There's a I was lot. already sold anyway. So, you know who I'd like to give a little scrub down is uh, Marty's mom. 
<laughs> in the future or in the present? In the oh, in the past. In the past, rather. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, you got to clean the dung off Biff Tannen. Oh, that's a good call. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> How much power washing is that going to take to get all that in the inside of that car? Well, the oh, car, him, car. or the other car. You're going to power wash a person? Yeah. <laughs> blast him right in the face. It was. It would probably start with like Just a like hoverboard, right? Because you know how they have like this little little things. Uh, no, to start no, no, with? no, 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 no. That hoverboard is going to be cl- like hidden under some dirt or something. Oh, you're going to find it somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. You can do the skateboard. You could power wash those terrorists at the beginning. So you power wash oh, the, your guns the out van. of hands. Oh. Yeah. If you do the mall, is it going to be the Lone Pine Mall or the Twin Pine? Oh, okay. Now you're talking. You could probably do the the truck that he brought the DeLorean in, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't yeah, remember what, what, what business was on it, but uh, we're, we're all speculating now. But You should do a Jurassic Park one, and then you really can just power wash giant piles of dung away. <laughs> That's one big pile of dung. Yeah. I feel like this is going to become a thing, though, because we what was the last one we yeah. had? We had SpongeBob. Yep. We had yeah. like like the possibilities are endless if they could just get a yeah. hold of these licenses. Two Raider, Raider. Raider. Warhammer, Raider, yeah. Final Fantasy Who, yeah. Who would have yeah. thought that a game about power washing would have been so successful? Right, what a Square Enix's biggest <laughs> hits in years. Well, It'd plus like eight today. bucks. I have no problem paying eight bucks for that because isn't the game still on Game Pass? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I, I just I would have paid twenty bucks for that probably <laughs> just because I you know that's the only thing I bought on Rocket League was the DeLorean. You know, uh, I, bought the, I bought the Ecto one as well. Oh, that's right. I remember that. So I think I got the Batmobile from DVS. Nice. Nice. Okay. Well, we're going to move on. want to give everybody a quick update before we move on to the new games we've been playing and uh, remind you that we are an independently funded podcast. Uh, we do pay for uh, all of the site and everything on our own. Uh, and we, well, I, on our own is not accurate because we do that by money from you guys, uh, our Patreon contri- contributors who we are very, very thankful for. Uh, donate each month at uh, specific levels, and specific levels do give them additional content, and we do very much appreciate it. I apologize that we are once again behind. It has been an insane month with uh, travel for me and uh, uh, with a, a family member in the hospital and now planning for R2V2, but we will get back on track. CB, what is currently available for everybody to check out and what's coming up in the near future? Ah, uh, well, Desert Island Games featuring Rain Orion from Quest Markers as well as the Final Fantasy 16 spoiler cast with Zach, uh, Scott, and Brandon Smith. Mm -hmm. Uh, The trade-off episode with uh, some Sega Genesis and Nintendo games is coming up, uh, specifically like Streets of Rage 2, DuckTales, you know, the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the Narrative Twist redo with spoilers. Yes, by the time you hear this episode, that should be live. So we do have one down for the month of September. I still owe you one for September in that will be coming. I just have to get through these games so that I can sit down and talk to Kevin about them. And I think I owe you guys a giveaway too. I did not do a giveaway for the month of September, so uh, we may just do a gift card to make that happen. Although, um, I may have something I can give away, but uh, stay tuned for that. Oh, also, I, speaking of... Go ahead. If I have my way, Scott and I will do an uh, episode about the saboteur. Yes. It's going to be really hard to find these 12 hours to go through an old game in, in October, man. Well, yeah, well uh, maybe we, we can play it in September and just keep, you know, Strong notes. There we go. The there we later. go. Uh, would that be a retro or would that be a break the seal? Maybe a little bit of both? Both. Yeah. yeah. Both. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Chris mentioned Marina Ryan. I got to say, I never do this, but I actually went back and re listened to the episode that I was on with Marina. I don't like listening to episodes of myself, but I was just kind of like, I want to see how that came out. And um, this is not praise on myself, this is more praise on her. I just thought it was a really fantastic listen. Um, I, I don't even think I actually even asked you guys if you checked it out or if you, I know Zach did, but um, right, listen, I listen to every quest markers the minute it hits my overcast feed. Yeah, it's she's a she's a great host, and uh, I just really enjoyed the conversation and revisiting it. So I, I thought you were great too. Well, thank just, you, man. I yeah. appreciate it. And I, I I also listen to my own episode, even though I don't like hearing my voice. Yeah, and she, yeah, she makes me sound pretty smart. I know, right? She's very good at, at pulling stuff out of you and, and, and uh, ans- asking questions to make you dig deeper than you're used to in your favorite franchise. So it's right. uh, really good. Alyssa, it's your turn. I'm just saying. We I know. Gotta, we got to make that happen. I, I've been talking to Marina. <laughs> Have you? Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. 
Okay, well, let's, uh, that's the news. Let's go ahead and jump into the new games that we've been playing. All right, Zach, what's new on the horizon that we can purchase this week or, uh, you know, avoid because we're all just crazy busy with other games right now? The newest cozy game, Fay Farm, comes to Switch and PC September 8th. NBA 2K24 is probably going to excite a lot of people when it comes to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 8th. Eternites is an action game dating sim hybrid coming to PS5, PS4, PC September 12th. Myth Force finally makes its way. It's a first-person Saturday morning cartoon kind of action game uh, coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC September 12th. I had to call this out. This way, Madness Lies, which came to Switch mm-hmm. and PC a few weeks ago. It's going to PS5. Guys, if you like turn-based RPGs, this thing is a comedy delight. Yeah, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's a great game. Coming September 12th, Nower, Play With Your Food, which I think you just kind of have to watch the trailer to believe. Uh, it's coming to PS5, PS4, PC, September 12th. Super Bomberman R2 is coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, and PC, September 12th. Gunbrella Action Platformer coming to Switch and PC, September 13th. Axolotl? 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 I'm assuming it's pronounced how the animal. Is it a Pokemon? Anim- it's an actual animal. Yeah, an axolotl. Yeah, yeah they're right. really cute. <laughs> axolotl, but this game is AK hyphen yeah. Zolotl. Because, because they have you, guns. You can shoot people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go to PS5, <laughs> PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch and PC, September 14th. Mugen Souls Z, which I had to call out because I'm pretty sure this is a PS3 action game. But oh, it's really? Randomly making its way over to Switch on September 14th. Biden Kaitos 1 and 2 HD Remaster. Shout out to uh, spoiling the big twist of the first game in your trailer, guys. Coming to Switch September 14th. Ad Infinitum uh, comes to PS5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC September 14th. Monster Hunter Now, which is Pokemon Go with Monster Hunter, coming to iOS and Android September 14th. The Crew Motor Fest, which I feel like was revealed only shortly uh, ago, is coming to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, PC, September 14th. And then finally, Thunder Ray comes to PS5, PS4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, Switch, PC, September 14th. Scott, are you skipping all of this just to keep playing Starfield and see what stars? Yes, I am. But I am going to keep Baton Kaido's 1 and 2 HD remaster in the back of my mind because that is a series I missed out on when it released. Don't watch the trailer. Uh, I thought after hearing what you said, I definitely will not. So um, who knows if it'll happen, but that's what interests me most out of this list. What about you, CB? I kind of want to play Noor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to play with your food? Dude, that looks trippy. That song in the uh, trailer, though, was a banger. I, <laughs> yes, I, 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 I want to make giant steaks. All right. I mean, that's every make those dream, giant steaks. Yeah, every man wants to cook a giant steak on the grill. What about you, Alyssa? I do want to check out Baten Kaito's 1 and 2. Um, I did watch the trailer, but apparently I wasn't paying a lot of attention because I do not remember the twist. That's uh, good. Well, they well, don't, don't watch they don't, it again. <laughs> they don't treat it as a twist, but when you play the first game, it is a twist moment. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's out there now. So Baten Kaito's for you? Yeah, that that's it. I think for me, I would probably lean towards a turn nights, a little action game dating sim, get my, get my, uh, date on my waifu on while I'm murdering these post-apocalyptic monsters. But the reality is I'm not, yeah, I'm also not going to be playing any of these. Yeah. The new, the, I'm, I want to clear room and play Sea of Stars. I think that game looks uh, amazing. It is. Spoiler alert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll, <laughs> we'll find, we'll find out somewhat shortly. Yeah. But I guess we may as well get the, uh, elephant out of the room first, huh? <laughs> CB, Sky, you guys are playing Starfield on the Xbox Series X's, I presume. I guarantee I have not played as much as CB. There. <laughs> <laughs> CB informs me he has played over 20 hours already. Yeah. Uh, wow. So, so, guys, this game unquestionably has more pressure on it than any Xbox release in history. Mm-hmm. Does it live up to the hype? Scott Clark. Boy, that is a loaded question. Uh, can we- I mean, you could, we could do a whole segment on whether or not a 7 out of 10 is a good review score. Yeah, apparently, uh, I had no idea that it was so contentious. Yeah, that's kind of insane, but, uh, you know, how dare they? Um, I, I can't speak to the quality of the overall game because I feel like I've barely scratched the surface because I am doing what I do in most RPGs, 
in that I am doing every side quest Stop. I can find on Stop the. Stop that oh. now. <laughs> Stop. You yeah. have no idea how bad that's going to get. Apparently, because like I was in a mission that uh, just had me go through a maze in one of these facilities, just trying to find and flip all these switches and just trying to figure out how to navigate through there. And I finally got annoyed and turned it off and went and played the other game that I was more interested in playing, which we'll get to in a bit. But uh, uh, I-, I can't answer that question fairly, Zach, genuinely, because does it meet its expectations? I mean, would Skyrim and Fallout 4 have gotten... Higher than seven out of tens back. Did they get higher than seven out of tens back in the day? I don't. I'm pretty remember sure Skyrim yeah, got Skyrim nines and real, tens. Real nines game of tens. the year contender. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But Fallout Four did kind of. Yeah, I guess Fallout disappoints was, to people. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess I should have said Fallout Three. That I, I think Fallout Three yeah. was more fun, but that uh, that that got plenty of tens at Game of the Year awards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that the the things that are affecting that score, and again, I have not read. Those reviews, I'm just speaking from personal experience, and I'm sure CB will disagree with me because of how much time he's put into it. I am not a fan of how in depth the the UI is, or the the menu system. Um, I, maybe CB, you you found a way to do this, but the thing that annoys me more than anything is when I'm in a firefight. If I run out of ammo with a weapon, um, there's no way to quick toggle to like to cycle to my next weapon. I have to pause the game, go into a menu, find the weapon, select it, and then back out of the menu. Learn to hot tab. There's a hot tab to be able to do. Oh, so you're hot tabbing a specific weapon. You know, like weapon. up, down, left, right. If you press yeah. down, you can do heal. Guess what? There's three other directions. Right, but then I got I to gotta manually put in, like because those weapons get upgraded, right? I'm not going to use the same rifle throughout the entire game. I'm going to find a better rifle, so I'm going to have to re-hot tab it. Use the same gun now for four levels. Okay. All right. And maybe the ammo is not going to be an issue later on because I've only gotten into a couple firefights. But uh, um, this is a very dense uh, menu system. I feel like it, it, it's deceptively dense. Like at the, on the surface, they've done a really good job with doing the like the main the main menu has like that wheel, right? Where like one is your missions, one is your inventory, one is your uh, map. One is, which by the way, there's no mini map. There's no, like, there's no map to see where you are on the planet, right? Yes. There, okay, so that's coming. No, no. Again, it's, it's there already. You just have to read the bottom of the screen. It took me a while to it. find it as well. Okay. But that's the thing that I feel really? like a yeah, mini I map. Like that's a common complaint is that there's no mini map. Yeah, yeah that's there, what I've been hearing. There is. So they, I, so they just don't do a good job of telling you that? No. Because would that be. An important thing to do. <laughs> you would yeah. think? Be- believe me, it, it's it's one of my gripes because I just I was like reading the bottom of the screen. I'm like, local map. Click, and all of a sudden, boom, and I'm like, are you kidding me? It's been there the that whole would be time. Super handy. I also miss the breadcrumb trails of game like uh, Dead Dead Space, where you click oh, yeah. something and then is that oh, there yeah. too? They're, and I'm not saying it. Or Fable oh, 2. I don't know. Left button. Go into survey mode. Create some breadcrumb trail. Okay, I did feel like that wasn't. That's I the, mean, I had the. That's the problem. Is this this game is so there's so much going on, but they don't explain it. Are they going the Dark Souls route? Figure it out yourself. Yeah, it, it it is like Scott. Do you still go to the the planetary or the galaxy map to fast travel? Yeah, yeah. You don't need to do that. That's uh, that's frustrating because it takes like three clicks to get where you point, need to go. Point to the star that you want to do. Double tap X. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, they, that's not even there. Because the, I've I've seen the hold X thing to to fast travel yep. to this, but I've not seen a double tap. If if so, like the mini, when you're in the menu system, if you single tap, it takes you back one screen. If you hold back, I mean the hold the button, it takes you to the next area of it. I did figure that out. I feel like okay. that was a. So if you're in the if you're in the thing. star field and you're looking, uh-huh. like flying around and you're like, okay, there's the marker. I want to go there. Put it right in the center of your reticle. Hold down X and then tap again, and you just whoop, fast travel. Oh, nice! Why don't that they guide what... you towards this? That's kind of, yeah. I'm surprised because there's this. here's the problem. There's so much reading, like yeah, an ungodly amount of reading. Mm-hmm. Gamers not a read. <sighs> <laughs> if I will tell you right now, if they ever made an achievement for this game to read everything, it would never happen. 
There's yeah. you mean so like you you're talking about like collectibles and lore and stuff? Or? Yes. I'm uh, here's the thing, like I'm 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 okay. I'm absolutely loving this game because it's everything that I've ever wanted ever. Right, wow. Makes sense. A little NASA punk action. Um this this to me I'll I'll swing back to that here in a second. Uh there's literally just so much and like I'm picking up quests. Like you'll be walking through a city and you will hear somebody talk about something and it's like, yeah, boop, new quest added. You don't even like go talk to the person physically. It just adds the quest automatically to your list. Wow, just a little, by bit, walking a little past bit of a uh, little bit of morrowind energy going on here. Uh, do, you're not kidding. Because you're going to see like, oh, I I remember hearing this about this and if I go there, I can figure out more about this. Yeah, that's cool. The, because I, I was walking through the city, it's like, you heard somebody talking about their secret base on this moon. And that's no moon. It's just like, <laughs> add it to your thing. Um, I want to make this abundantly clear. Bethesda has ripped another company off. Oh, I'm listening. The navigation through the stars and how it is all done looks incredibly familiar to another game called Elite Dangerous. I mean, welcome okay. to the video game industry, I guess, right? I mean, no, like, everybody's ripping the around. abbreviations, the yeah. mapping system. I'm like, I've seen this before. And that's exactly what I wanted. Because I, when Starfield first was announced and what they were talking about, what they wanted to do, I'm like, I really hope this is like Elite Dangerous, but way more in depth. Guess what it is? The combat, loving it, absolutely loving it. And I miss the VAT system because this game to me doesn't feel anything like Skyrim at all. I I I am finding a very hard time finding any similarities to Skyrim, but it does feel very much like Fallout Four overlaid in space. Yeah, and that's what I was telling Zach when we were talking about it over text, is I feel like um, the story is simple, but it's interesting at the beginning, the main story of what's going on, and you know the way they, they drop you into the world. It's not as iconic as sitting in a wagon and dragons coming in, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're awake, uh, finally. <laughs> right. Like a <laughs> meme or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not as iconic as that, but it, it still has well, you, the same tone. You certainly can't top the... Vault door opening of Fall Three, you really no, that can't. Was incredible. No. Yeah, the first time that happened, and it even feels like you haven't seen the sun ever because you literally yeah. haven't. Right. Um, that was so. That was pretty cool. So the thing that the the and I I can dance around this because I know how to now. Um, the item that uh, you know that, that kind of kicks the game off, Scott. The thing you wear? Are you talking about? Or oh oh oh, I know you're talking about the main star. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. Have you come across more? Not yet, no. Okay. You haven't found Again, more I haven't left the first planet, so... I'm, I'm on my 32nd. Oh, 32nd planet. I thought you were going to say 32nd thing. Um, oh. I, 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 I will say it's, it, I've found well into the double digits. Wow, okay. All I right. keep hearing from everybody you should focus on the main quest. Yeah, so it's super reading well. as well. Because everything well, else seems to kind fall of a, into line with it. Is it, but if I may, this is just, I haven't played it, so this is just me outside. Isn't it kind of weird to make a Bethesda game where the focus should be on the main quest? Yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel right just hearing it. It's like, Ugh. Yeah, or, but, or like they need to do a better job of guiding you there, right? Because the, your natural inclination should be like, I'm going to go land on every planet. I'm yes, check you know. every base. Because the way it's designed is there's something that's taking you to these planets. Like, there's a reason you're going to them. Right. But as you get there, each planet fleshes out the side stories to align kind of with, so you can do it all together. Um, okay. Oh, okay. So it's just like, okay, the, the main quest is bringing me to this planet, but there's more to do on this planet. But while I'm here, I may as well knock out this faction quest kind of thing. Yes. Uh, okay. that, that is a problem for me, is the fact that there's so many factions that you can join. 
Um, okay. And you have would... you gotten to the Wild West planet? This is the most important question. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. It can't. Is there like some kind of you, like martial or ranger faction you can join? Yes, there is. I remember this game so all turned around. All, all turned around. This game sounds the cool free, as hell. Freestar <laughs> Rangers. Freestar <laughs> Rangers. Wow, it's a pretty cool name, man. It, yes, yeah, about that sounds like game of the year right now. Um, I I have come across Sissy. She's oh, yeah. not. She is now my main traveling companion. I was uh, going to ask if she was a companion. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she's she's a companion. Um, is she playing a character that kind of looks like her? No. Okay. That's not I, like I don't a, think she, she does. A dark-haired Russian accented person. Oh, okay. But like, like yeah. so, as you're li- like listening to her through the accent, I'm like, I recognize that voice. Anywhere. Well, it's funny because the first character you come across, I believe her name is Sarah, who's my current companion. Looks I like got sissy. excited because I thought it was going to be here because it looks like her. That's like what, okay. It, that's why I thought because I keep seeing that character, the screenshots, I'm pretty sure. And I'm like, yeah. So obviously that must be Sissy Jones' character. And it's not, which is yeah. funny to me because she's got funny. like a British accent. I'm like, that does not sound like Sissy or Sissy's yeah. doing a really good job oh, you'll, of a right. British accent. You'll know right away because yeah. as soon as you run into uh, Andrea, uh, yeah. Great. Hey, I, I, I feel like fangirling over Sissy Jones right now. Yeah, right. Five, I, I five years like worth been, of work. Can't blame her. Yeah. I five years on this one game is just there's so much dialogue. Anyway, I feel like I've been I've been only speaking negative things about this game. I want to talk uh, positively. Uh I for the first time in a while, I feel like a Bethesda game has a has a is a solid shooter. Like the shooting is actually good. Uh it's not as quick as like a Call of Duty or anything like that, but I don't think it, it needs feels to be purposeful. Yes. It yeah, it feels deliberate. It feels. Um, you know. I, remember, I remember watching the Starfield directed being not only impressed that the gunplay actually looked fun, which doesn't make sense in a Bethesda game, right? But also that like the reload animations look slick and cool. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I don't know why that stood out to me, but it really did. Yeah, I mean it's it's good enough that I'm I'm okay with there not being a VAT system. I mean, mm-hmm. it kind of makes me want to go back and play Fallout Three again, just because I just love that system so much. That's is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Oh, but okay. uh, but but the shooting is fun, and you know the AI is not the AI is, is decent. It's um, but it, you still get to do the whole looting, uh, looting every corpse, you know, and, and oh, collecting and your, their armor and hat. And your companion will give you such crap for it too. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, I, I do miss being of... able to combine those. By the way. Yeah. But it's unless like, I'm missing it. You'd be like, oh, we're in the middle of a firefight. You just feel that it's important to loot that body. I'm like yes, oh, yes, yeah. I do. Oh, you do it in the middle of a fire. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just wait until it's all done. But uh, but here's the um, I, some of those ahead. firefights span such a distance. Oh, because when you start getting into bigger groups of enemies, they will run away, regroup, and reattack. Oh, interesting. So, are there zero G gunfights? Yes. Do this stuff. Sounds pretty cool. Yes, there is. <laughs> um, the ship to ship combat. It feels good. Chef's kiss. Uh, I will say again, that whole system is crazy complicated, Zach. Like you have to divert power. What was yeah. the was it the Star Wars game that you had to divert Squadrons. power? Squadrons. Squadrons. Yeah. Um, but like you you physically can't do certain things unless you divert power. Like you won't be able to jump to hyperspace or or you know whatever they call it in this game where Grav you drive. fast travel. Grav drive. Uh, you won't be able to do that until you go to your little bars and pull one down, and then and then add it to this one over here. Well, that uh, seems like it's part of the fantasy, though, right? Yeah, you right. are you are diverting because you, your ship's reactor in the beginning right. only has so much power, so you need to divert. Oh well, I'm not going to be grab jumping for a while. Divert power from the grab drive, raise yeah. shields, raise that's lasers. Why put, that's why you put six reactors on your ship. I haven't done any building, so I can't speak to that. But just wait, wait till you get a new ship, Scott. Okay, that's. I, but, I, I went into the system to look at how to build a ship, and I was like, "I'm out." <laughs> I, will, so, I will tell you right now. So the the first ship that you give can be crewed by two people. I have come across a ship that requires seven. Oh my goodness! All right, and say loot everything. Loot so is there like a is there like a gunner money. then? You can assign gunners. You can assign auto cannons. Okay, I'm there's intrigued. electro beams, missiles. Ah. There's there's two other aspects of the game I want to talk about, and one is the do we call it a skill tree? Is it a skill tree? Oh yeah, it's a skill tree. It, um, 
it's a progressive system. Right. And this is the part, you said this game doesn't feel like Skyrim. I think this is the one part of the game that does feel like Skyrim. Yes. Because you, remember how in Skyrim you would pick like persuasion and then you persuasion had its, own, had its own branch of skill trees or whatever. This game does a little bit different where there are basically five or six different main things. Like one is social. So that's where your um, speech is. And that's where your, like, what other abilities it, are under speech? Let me, let me see if I fight. It's like they took the special system and branched it out in a way that would be more Skyrim-esque. Yeah. So, like, when you pick speech, you now have a new goal of winning 25 you know, or, or passing six, some 25 persuasions. And if you do, you now have a uh, level two of persuasion, which means you're, you're increasing the chances of, of doing it. So, you know how Skyrim does that? The more you use it, the more you become adept at whatever that skill is. Right. It's Starfield's way of doing that. And I think it's, 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 it's interesting brilliant. in a, in a simplified way. Like you go and you look at the, those branching paths in Skyrim and it just, it just seems overwhelming. And there's just, like, where do you even go? Uh, this one is a little bit more simplified. As, as crazy as the UI is and in-depth as it is, I found the skill tree surprisingly easier to, to read, and my decisions weren't super difficult as to what I want to use to upgrade. Uh, what was the other thing I want to talk about? I do not like the lockpicking in this game. Shut up. The lockpicking is great. Okay, then I'm not understanding something Oh, dude, it's picking. It is a puzzle uh, system. It's it brilliant. Is, but it feels like trial and error. Like, if I make a mistake, then I just... So think like chess. Right. I got to think moves ahead, but I almost exactly. feel like I have to pull out a piece of paper to like, okay, so I, I'm going to explain it to you. That's a little for lockpicking. Right. Yeah. It, like I'm used to lockpicking where like you just kind of like find the sweet spot and then, you know, or whatever. Or, or, or do a, like a pipes mini game, like a Bioshock. Right. Right. This one is if you imagine a lock actually having like four. Tumblers. Uh, tumblers getting bigger and smaller. And then they give you a set of keys that uh, each of those tumblers has like a gap missing in it, two gaps missing in it. And then you have a set of keys that can match up in between those things. And you have to figure out which ones to use that will allow you to complete that lock, but also not keep yourself from being able to use a different piece. I don't know how to explain okay. it. Okay, so it's called the Digilock. And the way yeah. it works is you essentially look through a barrel so you're looking into the lock, and mm -hmm. you can see where the, the pieces of the key would fit. So mm -hmm. as you're inserting this thing, you're making sure not to pass it. it that's why I said, like, you have to think like chess, because no, you're, or, or like you're thinking... Or like a think dirty. Yeah. You're I was looking at Zach's face. <laughs> yeah, sure, I, I had the reaction. Well, because when you're inserting it, yeah, you want to get it just right, so you can make sure you re reach completion. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, family friendly podcast. Yeah, I'm talking about lock picking. Yeah. What are you talking about? You're just sliding something into the hole, man. That's all we're doing. I just got to. So. I just got to pay closer attention to it because I. I, I don't right. like. And then you at the end you unlock the box, right? Yeah. Yes. I don't like, <laughs> and I guess I can't complain because I guess Skyrim and Fallout did the same thing where you can break lock picks, and I just have not come across lock picks or haven't been able to find ones to purchase yet. That's because so, they don't look like lock picks. Yeah, maybe that's they look the problem. Like long, smooth, cylindrical black objects. Oh, that's the other thing. In Starfield, I feel like there are way more useless pieces of crap. Oh my god, around. there's so much. I've started filling my room with them. There, there is like at least in in Fallout and Skyrim, there's useful stuff. I hardly ever find anything useful. Everything is just like knickknacks and cups and and oh. you know, I'm not finding ammo. I'm not finding anything. Okay, so. The crafting system does the same thing that it does in Fallout, where some of the items can be used for certain things for crafting. Okay. So you'll have to start paying attention to that. Um, I either So I just want to talk about one of the things that I had happen in the game. Okay. It's not going to be a spoiler for anybody. Are you sure this yes. is, like, this is not going to be a spoiler positive in, because it's in just, CB language or our language? No, <laughs> absolutely positive because it has nothing to do with the storyline. It's nothing okay. to do with the quest. I just went to a place and had a thing happen. Mm -hmm. um, there's a giant floating abandoned casino. Okay, that's cool. And I'm like, 
wasn't part of a quest or anything, I'm like, cool, I'm going to go check this thing out because I'm gonna like, loot, bro. It's mm-hmm. just like when you go through Fallout, like you'll run into areas. It's like, oh, this used to be this. I might be able That's to That's the best part. Yeah. Right. So I went to a planet, found a giant floating abandoned casino, which was currently occupied by spacers, which is essentially mm-hmm. space pirates. Yar. Um, there's no gravity in this place. It's a little zero G battle. So it was a zero G battle inside a casino. That's pretty cool, dude. It yeah, was they, so they much chips flying around. Fun. And stuff. That's awesome. Because you get you'll get to a point that you have a backpack that gives you like little boosts. Mm-hmm. Oh man, flying from like behind different objects and like shooting at people that are all around, like Ender's Game, dude. It's so much fun. Like, yeah, I'm. I'm like right now, like it's it's hard for me to sit here and not go feed the itch. <laughs> like I'm I'm addicted to this game. I'm loving it because you go to each planet, you're like I could do the No Man's Sky thing and scan everything, learn more about the planet, and go sell my scans for money, and then go travel to a new area. Well, I, I mean, think this is this is like the dream CB game based on everything I've ever known about. You're listening to podcasts about space travel and stuff, and this game actually oh. treats it with a modicum of of reality. I mean, yeah, just I don't dude, know. I'm I mean, love like, of like alien and whatnot. I can't just, wait yeah. to find aliens. Oh my god, yeah. I'm excited. Well, let's hope my prediction is true. I think it would be again? that they would find aliens at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think it would be bold as hell if there weren't aliens. Actually, I'm. I'm going to go out and tell you right now, you're probably going to find aliens sooner than you think. Well, okay. I, sh- yeah. I, I, I have not run across any, but with some of the items that I've picked up around the game, I, it would lead me to believe that I'm probably going to run into some aliens at some point in time. Oh, you're totally going to run into M- Mothership Beta, Zeta, right? From <gasps> oh, Fallout. From Fallout 3? Like that's, oh. There's got to be a tie-in with that, right? There's got to be. Because I found it, be... I've found a couple like little winks and nods towards other Bethesda games already. Have you? Okay, cool. What mean, like... a dragon. <laughs> well, let, let's move on, just because I feel like we're going to be talking about Starfield for the coming well, weeks. I, yes. I have a question. If I, oh yeah, yeah. How viable a path is uh, charisma? Like you know, talking Very. Your way out of yeah. Uh, because I'll tell you right now, I'm doing it. That's my. That's what I started with. Was I wanted to make sure my speech was up. I went. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's always my preferred way to play too, right? Yeah, but, yeah, might as well. I went charisma and tech. Oh, speaking of, they do it a different way with the with the persuasion system. Which is kind of awesome. It's it's a really clever way to do it. They give you, if you try to talk somebody into something, instead of just straight up persuading them, they give you three different options as to how to persuade them. And you get three chances to do so, and each of the three choices get progressively more risky. So if you take the like, um, I'm I'm trying to convince you that I want to borrow your car, Zach. Okay. Option one gives me like one point because there's a meter at the bottom. Option one would be like, hey man, I I just need to borrow your car. That's worth one point. Like two points would be like, it's a life or death situation, Zach. I really need to borrow your car. But Uh for five points, I'd be like. Give me your car, or I'm going to kick the crap out of you. What are the points to? Sorry, is that what, like a bar that you're trying? Yeah, to you're with, you're or? trying to fill a bar. Okay, you're trying to fill a bar, but the higher the risk, the higher the point value is, the lower the success rate of your dice roll to get that persuasion is going to be. Right. And so then, you it, could get incredibly lucky and get it right off the bat, but even if you fail that, you could still go try a less risky one on your second or third approach. But to but try to fill the bar yes. yeah. three attempts. Okay. But what's cool about it is when you look at how their conversation is, like depending on how they're talking or the, it almost feels like there's a little bit of like subtle LA noir. Yes. In, so in the this idea as well. is when you go into a conversation with somebody that you know you're going to have, when they give you the little like persuade option or, or intimidate or whatever, before you choose that, it makes sense for you to go through and actually read all of the dialogue options that almost all of us skip whenever we're normally having a conversation. We just want to do the quest. But if you actually get to know the person first, that's going to help you. You'll actually get a fourth option when you, when you go to persuade somebody or intimidate somebody because you're using some information that you learned from them to make that, make that try 
easier. It's kind of okay. brilliant. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. Mm-hmm. for for the, the speaking options, I found persuade, intimidate, charisma, and flirt. I didn't yeah. find flirt yet. Oh, by the way, what character did you go with? What type of character? Uh, I chose Pilgrim with Empath. Okay. Okay. So I, I, because the traits almost seem like they're there to make the game easier for you. I don't know. They're give and take. You get this cool thing, but you get something bad in return. Yeah. Empath, I just wanted to open more dialogue options. Mm -hmm. And it, it does the whole like telltale thing. Like this person liked that. Yeah. What about, what did you go with, Scott? I went with a diplomat because I kind of wanted my speech to be a thing. Yeah. And I kind of liked the backstory of my character being a former diplomat and, um, which I don't feels know. weird. Turning to of... a life of violence. Yeah. I named my character Riker, but I spelled it with a Y. <laughs> I don't know. It, I thought it was it, cool. Is it, it Vasco, Vasco on your ship? Oh, yeah. That, like, uses, Robot. that actually uses your name or whatever? Yep. Does it all the time. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty cool. It, it's so weird, Scott, with how the game starts with what your character is doing in the beginning for your character to be a diplomat. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true, but... Could come from a diplomatic family, perhaps. Maybe, maybe. but the uh, yeah. dude. Oh, uh, I last I thing could I want to tell is I could go for days on this game. By the way, and we will for the coming weeks. We will. I think what I'm going to do when I dive into it again, I'm going to start mainlining quests just because I want to see what's up with the story, and I could just get lost just, in the side stories. Just slow down on the side stories, man, because yeah. I fell down that trap for a while, mm-hmm. and like I, I spent. Four hours on one planet trying to do one qu- like side quest line, which had little to no pay. Well, yeah, they, I mean, I confirm, feel like I'm getting XP, but that's it. They confirm new game plus, so sensibly you could use the same character to do your side quest right. after. Right. So I'm, just, so I'm that saying would, that's an option. Yeah. Well, and everyone's everyone keeps saying like just mainline the game, and because something happens with new game plus that is blowing everybody's mind. And it's getting really difficult to navigate through tweets. Yeah. <laughs> now because, uh, you know, the game's only been out for like, the game's not even officially out. We're just on early access, right? Yeah. Uh, um, no, two- it is officially out. It, everyone else, the, all the people that are being punished, uh, get to play it once. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it is. Yeah. But the, I if, mean, if, what, if what was the last the time extra- a major AAA game came out on a Wednesday? The real oh, release date is September first. Ah, uh, look at you. This this is a pretty good example of what I've been talking about. Okay. Uh, last thing I want to mention is I know there's been lots of comparisons to No Man's Sky, and No Man's Sky is very much travel wherever you want, and you you just go there. You don't fast travel. Um, Starfield is fast travel. Like you are literally jumping from place to place, and people are complaining about that. Well, you can you can fly if you want. Alana Pierce did a stream where she flew to Pluto, and it took seven hours. Did you? Is that, is that true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. When okay, when you're well. actually in the star field, you can legitimately fly the straight line. Now again, wow, it okay. sounds like says something the game really doesn't tell you. Yeah, that, I, I don't. It, but but apparently you can, so that's cool. But the comparisons to No Man's Sky, I think, are fair. Granted, I have not played that no. game in a long time since it's been updated, and they, and that game is basically a lot different than what it started as. But so far, Starfield feels like what I wanted No Man's Sky to be when I started playing it. Yes. Uh, like the, there's actual stuff to do. There's a, there's a, things that are interesting to me narrative wise. It's um, like a um, it has structure. I'm, that, that's yeah. You know. I I see this. I I hate the fact that people compare this to No Man's Sky mm-hmm. because it's a pretty natural comparison point though. No, this this feels more like Elite Dangerous. Fair, but when, and I that's mean, the problem is Elite Dangerous really really never got the love that it was due. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, exactly this. This game feels more in line with that because it, in that game you can legitimately like fly the straight line, land to different spots on the planet. It it feels it feels like a love letter to the Elite series more than No Man's Sky. So just keep that in mind. Um, and Elite Dangerous added aliens later, right? So same. yeah, um, that was a, that was a series where they. Like they kept hinting at aliens, and then they just put in an abduction event and didn't tell anybody about it. Well, just super cool because the game is the same as like No Man's Sky, where there's like seventeen septillion planets, and the chance right. of you actually coming across 
the abduction like, thing was like 5% or something. Y- you saw aliens in No Man's Sky before you ever did in Elite Dangerous. Right. Because they're like Which in the cool. space stations. Yeah. But yeah, th- this g- this game is phenomenal. Like, I mean, it's like your dream game, man. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of dream-esque games, though, moving along, uh, Scott and Alyssa, you've been playing Sea of Stars. And this game looks like another JRPG that kind of reminds me a lot of, uh, like, if I wanted a much cleaner, polished uh, Chrono Trigger. That's a good comparison. I'm going to let Alyssa kick things off because we haven't heard from her in a while. (laughs) And I feel bad. So I'm uh, sure you're farther in the game than I am. I'm only about three hours in. That's about as far. I think you're further than me, actually, because I've been bouncing back and forth between Scott. Skyrim. Starfield. Starfield. Okay. <laughs> no Man's Skyrim. <laughs> no, I'm really loving this game, and since I don't have any knowledge of Chrono Trigger, and I think you compared the combat to Paper Mario, Scott? I did. I've never uh, played that either, so this is pretty okay. much n- kind of new to me. Uh, the comparison to Super Mario, or to Paper Mario to me is the timed hits. Yeah, uh, and you- I'm awful at those. <laughs> well, not even not even just Paper Mario, but like the like Superstar Saga and that, where like you have to. You guys have played those games, right, Zach no. and CB? You, I have you course. played. So you know how you have to like kind of recognize when an enemy is going to attack you to be able to time it right. This game does that, mm-hmm. but it expands on it. But I, I told you I'm going to let you talk, and then I talked yeah. over you. So keep no, going. No, that's fine. Um, I love this game. I played it ten, I think like ten minutes, and I texted both you and Zach that I loved it. <laughs> 10 minutes <laughs> in. Um, it's gorgeous. I, You can choose between two different characters to play as, and you can switch between them if you want to later. Uh, I, I chose to play as Valer, the, the girl that is associated with the moon. I don't know mm-hmm. if you chose her or Zale. I chose the other. I chose Zale, yeah. Zale. Um, so far, I really like playing as her. Um, even three hours in, it still feels pretty much like the tutorial section yeah. of the game. I um, just got the boosts. That's about as far as I am. Like, I just boosts. acquired that. Where you I'm... can attack enemies and then they... Um, where you can do magic without casting magic. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm past that. Um, yeah. That's a cool... That's a cool thing. Uh, mm. what, what are the differences between picking the boy or the girl? Uh, the boy is associated with the sun and he has sun powers and the girl has moon powers. Right, but you... But, um... So I'm sorry, but aren't they traveling together for most of the game? Yeah, and you do actually, uh, when you're battling, you do play as both characters. It's turn-based, so you will play as both. So, so I'm not kind of sure. A, it's what, more like a party leader situation. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. I don't know if it'll have any implication on the story or anything. I'm not really sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do play as both when you're in combat. The thing that drew, is drawing me to this right away, outside of the art, which Alyssa mm-hmm. already said is gorgeous, is I just love the character interactions. It is, yeah, they're wonderful. Just as charming as I remember Chrono Trigger being. Uh, th- these two characters, you actually get to see them grow up mm-hmm. in flashbacks. Uh, you get to see their childhood friend, um, Garl. <laughs> oh man, I love that character <laughs> I know, so much. I love him he's, so much. He's so great, and you get to see kind of how they rose to become the. Um, the solstice, for lack, yeah, solstice for lack of a better word, magic casters kind of thing, where they discover uh, that they have these abilities and 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 uh, these trials they have to go through, and then now they're on, you know, where I'm at in the game, they're on this quest to go out on their own, and I just got out on my own. Mm-hmm. It is it is just really great, and I cannot wait to see where the story is going. It really almost made me angry that this came out at the same time as Starfield, because not to knock starfield but i just am so much more interested in playing this game um i i haven't been this you know nostalgic filled while playing a new game in a long time it really feels like i'm 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 a kid again going back and playing a jrpg that is genuinely doing new things with its system systems that uh i'm not gonna say are completely fresh because they're iterated they're iterative on Mm -hmm. on other things but they're really clever. So, for instance, one of the things that is interesting is that sometimes enemies will have a number, like a countdown timer appear on them, 
which means that they're going to unleash a more powerful attack than a typical blockable. Well, I guess all of them are blockable, but a typical standard attack. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they will have these symbols that pop above them that are different types of attacks that you and your partner have in common with one another. And your goal is to do those types of attacks before their timer reaches zero. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, Zale, am I saying that right? Zale? Yeah, I'm assuming Zale has, there is Zale, yeah. Right, he attacks with a sword, if, I'm, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, and then Valer has a staff, but she whacks people with it, so... Right. So, at the beginning of the game, you'll have, say, a sword symbol, a hammer symbol, and a sword symbol. So, before that timer reaches zero, you need to hit this enemy with two sword attacks and one blunt weapon attack, which is what the girl's attack does, mm -hmm. and then it cancels that special attack that they have. So in some ways, it almost feels like a puzzle game in order for you to figure out ways to make those attacks happen in the rotations of the turns. Because you'll get more party members down the road too, and they kind of feed off of your abilities. So you could get sun attacks or moon attacks, blunt attacks, sword attacks, and you just have to do the right combination to keep that enemy from attacking you. So like Alyssa said, it still feels tutorially in the first three or four hours. So it's not getting super difficult. But I have heard that bosses later on will unleash attacks that you absolutely have to counter. Otherwise, it could wipe your party kind of situation. Oh, so, Have you come across a boss yet? I've come across the... It's a, it's a boss, yes, but I would say that it is... A friendly boss. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um. So I don't. I'm again trying to not spoil what's going on, but um, I, I, but it was intense. It was. In, it actually yeah. took me tw two times because Did it? he kept doing the same attack the first time. Oh yeah. And I'm like, but then the second time he never used it. <laughs> so funny. you, I'm like, do you just not know their patterns because both times were completely different. Well, the cool thing is, is that every attack is blockable as well. True. Like, just like you have timed hits, you also can time defend, much like Paper Mario or the or the Superstar Saga games. And you don't necessarily get zero damage, but it lowers the yeah, amount of damage it that lower. it does to you. And then the really cool part is, and again, for all I know, the game is going to keep expanding on these systems. But I love this boost thing that they do. Oh yeah. Um. Part. So at, at some point. Oh oh. By the way, when you attack, it replenishes your MP, your, yeah, your mana, your uh, which is a which is kind of clever. So it it basically incentivizes you to use physical attack. magic. It incentivizes oh, yeah. you to use magical attacks first mm -hmm. because there's no reason not to because you're going to be able to replenish that mana by doing a physical attack on your next run, which I think is clever. But then they do a deal where you're going to have other party members in your in your party that aren't magic. Right, they don't have magical mm -hmm. abilities, but when you eventually earn the ability to basically knock magic out of enemies with physical attacks. So when you attack really them with cool. a physical attack, they drop these little yellow gems or whatever that a character can then absorb, which is called boost. And now that character has a magical ability of one of their of one of the two main characters. So that becomes a part of the piece of the puzzle to do these block attacks. It's just it's so clever. It is is just really great. I'm loving the stories. I'm loving the characters, and I can't wait to get back to play more. Oh, same. I'm excited to get back into playing it tonight. Mm -hmm. One of those games I don't want to put down, but when I do, I'm I'm sad to put it down. Yes. Part of me is a little bummed I didn't get it on Switch because I feel like I could just knock through a, a bit of the story on, on on the go. I guess I could do that on my phone now, right? I could do remote play. So yeah. Maybe... Yeah. Well, you know, and you 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 could so you could restart it on the Switch. I could I have to repurchase it. Which, hey, at this point, I'm kind of happy to do. I actually kickstarted this game. Oh, that's so. right. Yeah, I was we're, it's game we're supposed Pass. to be we're on a purchasing. gravestone, yeah. which I have not come across the graveyard yet. Yes, somewhere in the game there is a gravestone that says "The Gaming Outsider" on it. So, um, because of the level of Kickstarter that I that I contributed to, so. Anybody listening and playing the game, search every gravestone you find, because if you find it before I do, I want to know about it. See where it is. So and Then you find out that uh, it's randomly populated, depending on game to game. Oh, that would suck. It would. 
that would suck. But yeah, Sea of Stars. I'm playing it on Xbox, but it is everywhere. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, Switch, PlayStation, PC. I Do know I have that right? Switch. It's it's just charm. It was like twenty bucks or something. Like it's not even. What Sea of Stars? I think so. I think it's twenty five. I got a code through my uh, Kickstart thing, so I have. No- is it thirty five? Really? Yeah, thirty five dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I, I, that it's, makes more sense. But it's on Game Pass and PlayStation Plus yeah. Extra. Mm-hmm. I'm playing it on Game Pass. Very happy for that developer. I've been following the Discord and just their promotion and how happy people are to see how that game is progressing. And oh, the other thing I didn't mention is you know how like when you're just going around, walking around environments and you, you run into into random encounter enemies, mm-hmm. which is standard in a JRPG, right? Oh, yeah. But the but the traversal when you're going from place to place just feels so much different than any JRPG I've ever played. Like you're climbing a wall and then jumping off that wall and then coming through the environment it feels like and then coming up on the other side there are things to jump across it almost feels like platforming sections but they're not really platforming because it's just like go here and press the button yeah you can't really mess it up right but it just it just makes it more interesting than just walk from a to b it just feels like it's more yeah. interactive as you're going sounds more adventurous yes and you want to like look you want to explore every nook and cranny because you might find food or a treasure chest Mm-hmm. So or I'm tombstone. scouring every environment before <laughs> I leave, and if I leave before I've uh, um, scoured the environment, I go back. <laughs> wow. So do I. So do I. Or if you see a you you see a chest, and you're like, I can get there somehow. I just got to figure out how. Yeah, it's like, oh, gotta get there. Yeah, because we're talking like you know armor. And yeah, there's weapons armor and, and stuff. So yeah, um, it's 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 really great. It's just I'm 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 in love with this game, and I've never. I think this is the first time that I've kickstarted something where I have absolutely zero regrets in doing so. This <laughs> yeah, that's is pretty rare. Yeah. So, I mean, I liked Amplitude, don't get me wrong, but uh this one is you know, I mean, I think I paid like 100 bucks for this for this Kickstarter, you know, for a $35 wow. game. So, I mean, we got two copies of the game and, you know, but uh very very happy for Sabotage Studios. I just feel a bit bad for them. Because this is not the best time to release a JRPG, and yet you know? they still made a hundred yeah. K sales in, on the first day. Yeah, it's true. There's nothing to, nothing to sneeze at when you're on two subscription platforms. Yeah, so they got a you know they got a, a check from Microsoft and Sony, and then right. they also sold a hundred thousand copies on top of that. I really want to know what that check size is. I think it's probably on a case by case basis. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they paid a lot more for Starfield than they did CO Stars. Oh, oh, for sure. I'll tell you. Well, they, they are getting. The, a... They footed. Good. They foot the whole bill for Starfield. So yeah, that was a, that was a two hundred and fifty million dollar probably investment there. Right. Well, it's sea, so of, good. sea of Stars does have a physical version coming early twenty twenty four, and I will be picking one up for Switch. Man, that I may. That's one where I would consider buying one just because I want to support this developer. I just love what they're do, what they've done yeah. with this game. Yeah, I, you can tell there's just so much love in this game. I, I want to play it. Like I, I love the way it looks. It's just it has the very unfortunate timing of releasing yeah. on a game that I've legitimately been waiting years for. Right. It Sea of Stars might be the best, visually speaking, the best looking game of the year. It looks stunning. Oh, it's gorgeous. And I love the cutscenes. They're so different from the actual gameplay. And I just like oh, okay. every time I see a cutscene, I'm like, <gasps> it's so It pretty. almost has an anime feel to yeah. it. Yeah. Like a oh. crisp. It's anime just feel so it. gorgeous, and I can't get over it. And we haven't even talked about the sound design. The the, the music, first off, is very catchy, but there are just little sounds in the environments that they had they did not need to put in there. Mm-hmm. You know, just just like things in the environment making noises in the background. And I'm playing with headphones, so I'm hearing them a little bit more probably. Yeah. Um, but uh, friend of the show, Nindy Nation, on uh, Twitter at Nindy Nation, uh, actually tweeted something about something. To comment on that, and Sabotage actually responded with a whole YouTube video that they made where they went into the sounds behind, or you know, the development of the sounds in this game. So I haven't watched it yet to speak to it, but I've I've got it queued up to watch probably later. Uh, that, that's cool. They also did an interview with uh, PSN Profiles about their thought process behind all of their trophies too. Hmm. It's kind of that's kind of cool. They're doing very specific interviews, you know. Yeah. It's just very cool. I, I am indie spirit to them, right? 
And this mm-hmm. is just the think what they're gonna what else they're gonna do. Just keep doing this kind of stuff, guys. This is great. Well, well it's kind of neat. Uh, you know, at least their website kind of alludes to the fact that you know they want to keep just doing different genres, but that each one will still be in that same messenger universe. Mm-hmm. Which is it's kind of neat to do different genres that tie in together in some way. Which, by the way, I've not seen any connection whatsoever yet to the messenger. So it's not like you have to have played the messenger to get this story. It is its own story. It's yeah, just in the I haven't played universe. the messenger, so. And you're not lost at all, right? No, not at all. Yeah, it's it's a very well t- and very well written. I just is. really like how the dialogue is written. You said that about the messenger too. I remember. Yes. Well, the messenger was so well written just because there's this character that speaks in a very witty way, but it's all done in text. Right. It is. It's really. I'm shocked you haven't played that game. That it's, is a that's a zag game. I mean, it's 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 downloaded. I'll play it. But yeah, I think I got to see the stars first, man. It looks too good. It does. I don't know the length. I haven't uh, looked up the. I how looked long up. To be. It's about 25 hours. That's not too bad. That's pretty pretty decent, actually. I could knock that out. It's a little Chrono Trigger length, you know. Yeah. Makes and Alyssa, sense. if you like this. Mm-hmm. You definitely need to go play Chrono Trigger. I think we've talked about this. Yeah, I bought it on uh, Steam. I don't well, know don't if you do can play that. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Don't, don't do that. But uh, um, don't play it on PlayStation like I did. Oh my God, that's even worse. Well, yes. isn't the PC just the port of the PlayStation version or no, something like PC, that? Isn't the PC the port of the phone version? Is it really? Oh man. With with new sprites and texts and stuff. That game is. The thing that the similarities that they have there, uh, Alyssa, is you mm-hmm. know the combo attacks that they have in Sea of Stars. Yes. Where you can like to do an attack with you and your buddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a that is a huge thing in in Chrono Trigger. Okay. Um, yeah. So it. I think I think just like the animations and the character interactions and the combos are the biggest comparisons to Chrono Trigger. But uh, I'm getting like I said, I'm getting a lot of Mario RPG and those Mar- the, those Mario style. Uh, role-playing games in this one. So again, that is Sea of Stars. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on. Zach, I want to talk to you about this game you're playing called uh, The Making of... Did we, did we land on Karataka? You know, actually, there's a whole video on this documentary about the pronunciation of Karataka. Yeah. Uh, and that, because, you know, it was pre-internet, so no one really knew how to pronounce it. Uh, Jordan Mechner, I think, says Karateka. Okay. But, uh, he... He acknowledges that that's not even proper anyway because it's based, it's a Japanese uh, symbols or whatever. So Alyssa might have the best chance of pronouncing it actually correctly. <laughs> Karateka. Yeah, because there's some kind of way where they don't enunciate their consonants quite the same way. So, but yeah, for me, it's Karateka. Okay. Cause but this been... is, this doesn't appear to be a game per se as much as it is a history lesson, that an interactive history lesson. Is that a correct assessment? Yeah, I would say it was, it's an interactive documentary. Okay, is what I would is what I would. That call sounds it. really cool. Which it's, is like what they did for the Atari Fifty, right? The Digital Eclipse as well. Yeah, I didn't I didn't mess with that. I don't have an affinity for Atari to that degree. Okay, uh, but this is the first entry in what they're calling the Gold Master series, which I guess is going to be a series of these interactive documentaries. And, and Atari Fifty seems cool because it's going through that uh, history. But this is the history of one game, mm-hmm. which is which is pretty cool. Uh, because it's broken into like five chapters of history, and each chapter has this kind of like diagram you're clicking through. But in each each bullet point or what have you, it'll be a different piece of history. But they like they actually have, you know, Jordan Mechner kept a lot of journals, so they actually have journal entries of what he was thinking at the time. Or they'll have design documents of him trying to draw up a bus or or a boss. Sorry, uh, <laughs> I was like, is this buses? Bus, and- yeah, <laughs> bus boss. You know, it's funny because it was actually, if you if you look at Karataka, right, it's obviously like some kind of mid medieval Japan setting, right, right, the game. But originally it was in the 80s, and you would you took like a helicopter into the island and stuff. Uh, we learned via this documentary. Huh. So uh, it, is, it is pretty neat. And uh, But you click through, yeah, you see the journal entries, you see, you know, box art mock-ups, you'll have video interviews, but not only with people at Broderbund, the publisher, or, you know, an interview with uh, Jordan Mechner, but you also have, like, uh, John Tobias is interviewed, the co-creator of Mortal Kombat, because hmm. he was so influenced by the game. So they have, uh, they have these, like, important vi- other video game figures who were inspired by the, this game as well. So it's kind of an in-depth documentary in that way. 
but yeah, there, there it's the, the general structure is you go through each chapter of history and like the first chapter is about death bounce, which was this first game you try to get published at Broderbund. And it has all these cool letters of back and forth where they're basically trying to, you know, teach him like, Hey, maybe this needs more color. And, but you actually like, and then you can play the prototype version of the game that was unreleased to, to learn what they were talking about. And you go back in and you learn some more history about the back and forth. And then maybe you see a different version of the game. Uh, it's, it's just, it's really cool. Here's a question I wanted. I want to ask you that I would never asked Sean when he reviewed Atari Fifty for us. Sean Coates, who writes uh, for the site, um, is you say interactive documentary. How much interaction are we talking? Is this something where I can sit down with some popcorn and watch this, or am I going to have to be moving around a lot, or is there is there more watching than interacting? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I guess you could have some popcorn if you you could play most of it one handed when you're just scrolling through each of the history lessons. But you know, as you as you see the design drafts for Karataka and the publishing agreements and stuff, that's going to lead you into playing the Apple II version of Karataka. Oh, so the game is included on on there as well, right? That there's there's four finished versions of Karataka, two ver- finished versions of Death Bounce, a previously unreleased game. Uh, there's there's prototype versions. Uh, there's there's a lot you can do in terms of playing, um, which is which is pretty crazy. Because you know, not only did they do the work to make the Apple II C64 uh, uh, versions of Karateka playable, they also went ahead and remastered it too. That is yeah. pretty cool. So, how do you feel about the future of this style of game? Do you think that this is—I I say game in air quotes—is is this right? Well, it's not like you say it's not really a game, but it's also kind of more than a game, mm-hmm. uh, is, is how I put it in my review because you're being guided through the entire history of a game. It does require you, you know, you, yes, you don't have to play the game. I did, I did beat every version of Veronica included. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. Uh, but it, it yeah, it, it guides you through the game and, and because it's so in depth about one topic and yeah, I think this is the future of documentary and game preservation because the video game industry famously does not care about its history. Mm. Right? How many how many games have just had source code deleted off a hard drive somewhere? You know, we can, we can, we can never play Panzer Dragoon Saga natively because they just don't have the information for it anymore. I don't understand that. If I had written that kind of code for that long amount of time, I would be keeping track of that and securing it somehow. Right, but apparently you need the space for the next game. Yeah, but some some of those games, like when they're like, okay, well we we've been on this game for five years. So we're we're gonna update all of our stuff, and they just threw the PCs away, right? So mm. there there's a chance that out there somewhere in the wild is the source code for like Panzer Dragoon or other games, but the problem is they're just on hard drives in landfills, right? And how do you and find I don't that know enough. How do you acquire it. I don't know enough. I can't just reverse engineer it from the release version, but I yeah, I don't know enough about game development to speak to that. Right, but the, but this thing, yeah, it absolutely is uh, the future. I think digital clips are uh, straight up heroes for doing mm-hmm. this. Uh, it helps that I cared about Karataka anyway because Jordan Mechner created Prince of Persia. Obviously, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know that's a straight up straight up legend right there. You know he, he was he was whipping out he was uh, doing contract deals with Brodebund when he was a teenager. His dad had to sign off on on his first contract. Oh wow, co-sign as a as a uh, guardian and. Yeah, so it's it's just it's cool that somebody else cares this much about video game history to document this thoroughly about a single game, and it really makes me excited. I don't care what it could be a game I've never heard of that they do the next one on. I'm going to want to play through it just because of how thorough this is. Not and, not everybody is as nerdy as you or I. Do you anticipate this being a high seller thing that's going to be sustainable for future games of this type? I w- I would presume they sh- they shouldn't cost too much to make, right? Because while Digital Eclipse is putting together a, a, you know, a TMNT arcade collection, I feel like you could have a pretty small team just you know, putting together the interactive menu thing, especially now that they have like the format down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just kind of you have the shell, and you just kind of yeah. fill in the spaces with like recordings. and Right, and I'm, I'm sure it's difficult to get a you know, Apple II version of Karataka running on modern hardware well. Uh, yeah. So I'm sure there's some work there, and there's definitely some work into the remaster. Uh, the the remastered Karataka is excellent, by the way. Fluid, wonderful. I, I, that would have been worth twenty dollars alone to me. Just 
that and the original Chrono Cut bundled together. Mm -hmm. So like the, the twenty dollars, I think, is a, a hell of a deal. Uh, but the the Karataka remaster they did has a whole commentary track, and they talk about making it. And it's like everything they designed it as though it was still a, a mid '90s PC, so it doesn't feel too modern. Huh. Uh, and and the version they remastered is excellent because you know you'll see a Jordan Mechner note about how he wanted to have a tree in the background, but the C sixty you know the processor just couldn't handle it. <laughs> so here in the remaster, they put in the tree. <laughs> That's awesome. So in many ways, it's it's closer to what his original vision was before he had a compromise. How long does it take you to get through the content? I mean, is this like a documentary length, like a couple hours? Well, it took it took me seven hours to get through everything. Mm -hmm. But I did play through. You know, you don't have to play through the games if you don't want to. How long does it play through? I've never played Karataka, so I don't even oh, know. It, I mean, I can get through Karataka in like eight minutes, probably. Oh, really? <laughs> but you know, if you're playing it for the first time, it's probably like a I would don't think maybe a thirty minute game. Oh. Uh, if you're well, it used to have only one life, right? So you just have to die and retry the whole thing. But here they have a rewind feature for the old versions, or in the remastered version, you give up to eleven lives. Oh, but Is there tro yeah. trophy support. Yeah, trophy support. I got every trophy except for they. They have these. Their remasters have these goal lists that are absolutely insane. Like get you know get an eleven hit combo four times. So I don't think it's going to happen for me. Uh, <laughs> But uh, if you are, if there is anybody else out there who's a huge Jordan Mechner fan and therefore played Karataka a bunch, the, the remaster might be worth checking out alone just for some new surprises. Just want to throw that out there. All right. And, and at the center of this documentary is uh, the story of Jordan Mechner and his father, Francis. His fr he did the music, Francis Mechner, for uh, Karataka and Prince of Persia. Okay. But they, they have, I've never seen a father be so supportive in an origin story before. Dude, I'm gonna have to pick this up. I have, <laughs> what is the price of this? I gotta play it. Twenty twenty dollars. That's. I, I think I'm just gonna have to pick it up. They would. But, I mean, that's how much just a documentary would cost. You know, to buy yeah. a Blu-ray. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, I have no problem with that. It's I'm, yeah. The, the father son son is touchy, especially if, like most people, your parents weren't supportive all the time. It's right. nice to see one who was. Yeah, I totally get it, man. So again, that is the making of Karataka. Uh, it's available. Uh, he he's uh, Zach played it on PlayStation, but it is also available on Xbox, Switch, and PC. Uh, published by Digital Eclipse. And uh, thanks to them for hooking us up with the code. That was very nice of them. And uh, you can read Zach's review on the website as well. All right, want to remind everybody that of our social media outlets: Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the GoCast. Also, our Discord server. There's a link in the show notes. Also, drop if you can. Drop us a review on whatever podcast app you use. It helps us get the word out there. And lastly, our website is thegamingoutsider.com. There you can find all of our episodes as well as all of our written content. Uh, like I mentioned, Zach's review of The Making of Karateka will be up there as well as some other uh, reviews. I think um, CJ Moore wrote his first review for us on Ultimate Chicken Horse. Uh, which right. one am I? Which, which one? I know it's an older game, but uh, he loves that game, so I had to talk about it. And then uh, David Newman's review of uh, Crime Boss, Rocky City, is right. also available mm -hmm. uh, on the website as well. He loves it just as much as everyone else. <laughs> yeah. All right, with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into our From the Outside In topic. For those who are new to The Gaming Outsider, once a month, we like to ask the community for questions that we then turn around and answer on the show to make for interesting conversation. It's a great way to interact with our listeners, and uh, if they're anything like me, uh, they love hearing their name on a podcast. That's one of my favorite parts of listening to podcasts is uh, me writing in and somebody saying my name, like, hey, it's me. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to start over on Facebook, and CB's been awfully quiet, so I'm going to kick things off with oh, him. Okay. Uh, over on Facebook, Sean Coates writes in, do you think the era of prolonged hype buildup spanning several years has come to an end? I've noticed lately from many prominent AAA publishers that the span of time between the initial reveal to the date of launch has been a few months. Games like Mortal Kombat 1, Hot Wheels Unleashed 2, Super Mario Wonder, and Mario RPG Remake were all announced just a couple months ago and are all due to release later this year. It feel, certainly feels like Starfield is the last hurrah for games launching with intense hype buildup. What are your thoughts? Thank you. Oh. Well, I think there's one key factor that we talked about quite a bit earlier in this episode that is going to affect my answer to this, and that is if a strike happens, 
<laughs> that could throw a whole different mm -hmm. wrench into the into this deal. Um, I don't know. I I mean, I feel like there's always going to be companies that are going to throw a title out there or a teaser trailer years before it comes out. I don't I don't see that going away anytime soon. That's just how news cycle works, right? We hear about things months and months in advance. I hope more of this does happen. Yes. Remember how excited we were when Fallout 4 was announced and they're like, and it comes out in five months or whatever it was. New Vegas? I know, New Vegas, uh, 76. Well, yeah, but I mean, I mean the, the it happened first with Fallout 4. Right. Yeah, remember Fallout he, 4 was announced in the summer and released in the fall. Yeah, I think it came out like in November or something like that. Yeah, I think uh, November yeah. 15th because it was the same day as Rise of the Tomb Raider. Huh. Man, that was a bummer of a week. <laughs> Also, uh, good memory, Zach. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I think. I could be wrong. But. I'm going to start calling him Sheldon. Just like, no, remember the, no, why what, would you do That's not very nice. No, it was like, I just watched an episode where he remembered ex specific dates and time in the afternoon that something happened. That's all it was. No, I've oh. been called that before, so don't feel have bad. You? I actually I don't, have. He's, he seems insufferable. Oh, yeah, it's in a lovable way. You're not insufferable, Zach. I love no, you. No, far mm -hmm. from it. Well, uh -huh. uh, November 10th, I was wrong. See, look at that. Oh, there you go. But you were close. We'll call you Howard instead. That was pretty close. See, another character on the Wallowitz. show. Yeah. Yeah. Howard Wallowitz. Um, no, How I, do you guys know this? Are you guys Big Bang Theory fans? I love the Big Bang Theory. I, unashamedly. Wow. People make fun of it and hate it and talk about it. I, I genuinely love that show. There, there are parts of it that I truly Oh, like the first four yeah. seasons are great, and then the kind of the show kind of takes a nosedive after they try to stretch it out for way too many seasons. Yeah. Yes, I like the early seasons, and then I dropped off of it. Yeah, God I just damn. watched it, it the first four it seasons. More on the nerdy part of it rather than the sitcom, because the science is actually like legit. Yeah, like the stuff that he's saying is actually sound. Like, yeah. like, and what's her name? Uh, Mayim Bialik is like legitimately mm -hmm. like a scientist and. I know. Yeah. I only know. I know her from uh, Jeopardy. Yeah, she was in know Jeopardy. I know her from Blossom. Blossom. <laughs> um, like the, the Zach is looking Blossom at... from Powerpuff no, Girls. No, no. no, Blossom. The there television a TV show, show from the nineties. It was Blossom, yeah. probably oh. before you were born. Zach. It might have been yeah, actually. Uh, it was before. I never watched it. I've just heard about it. Okay, going back to Sean's question. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, How did no, we get I... to Blossom from his comment? <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't think it's over yet. But I do think that we're going to start seeing shorter windows because here's the thing, like the Elder Scrolls six coming out at right. some point in time in the future. I mean, but that's also Bethesda. <laughs> like that's, you know what I mean? Outer Wilds 2. Ah, oh, that's been, I haven't thought about that game in a while. Avowed. Yeah, there's Hell Hellblade 2. Yeah. Oh, there's oh a, man. Yeah. There's a lot of games out there that uh, they're like, look, title card. Congrats! But it's then, gonna come but out to at his some point, point, like we heard about Super Mario Wonder, what at the beginning of summer at that direct, and it comes out in October, right? But does well, that also game to Sean's looks... point, we don't. I was gonna say, does that game look super complex to you? I, it I looks know. vastly what, different, man. What does like the complexity the... have to do with their hype cycle? Because some of these games that are like take years upon years, and like the the programming complexity has to be insane, right? What does that have to do with the release date, though? Because they could have announced are... Super Mario Wonder like years ago, yeah. like as a concept. Well, that's because I think Nintendo's finally latched onto the shorter announce and release. Because well, that's Nintendo his point. Does all that, but but this is Nintendo. Like Nintendo does almost all their stuff in house, so they mm -hmm. don't have to. Right. Whereas you have companies like Bethesda or other ones that like, hey, like we. We need investment money. I think that's what it is. Is it's like we need investment money, so we're going to announce this. Give us dollars, right? Or Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. They were very open that that was basically just a recruitment trailer, their first trailer. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we need developers. Here's a title card for yeah. for Elder Check Scrolls Six. Look, look at what we're working on. Beyond Good and Evil Two. Hey, the longest in game in development game of all time. Yeah, really? Still, is still it? not officially canceled. Yeah, I thought it was that one that one Kickstarted game that they, that people been talking about that people are still contributing money to. Oh God! Yeah, Good and Evil Two was announced before Kickstarter existed. It was. It was announced in two thousand eight. What What's the game I'm I'm thinking of though? It was a Star, Star Citizen. 
Star Citizen. I thought yeah. Star Citizen was the one that was longest in development. No. It, wasn't that in development before? No, no it was Duke Nukem Forever had the record, and now Bang Yaga Nuo 2 took the record. Ah, okay. Bang Yaga 2, yeah. 2008, man. That was when the first teaser trailer was. That was that long ago? Yeah. Yeah. They re-revealed it in 2016 and made a big show of it, but yeah, it was originally announced in 2018, never officially canceled. Yep, still to this day, not officially canceled. It is on uh, Ubisoft's website, it's still in production. And wasn't it like a cinematic trailer with the with, with the, the pig man a monkey? Oh yeah, no, well, that was you're, again. You're thinking of the reveal. That's the 2016. The, origi- the original, the original trailer. Card. Well, no, it was, it was in 2008. It was uh, Jade and Paige were broken down on the side of the road, and he was snorting flies through his no- uh, nostrils to pass the time. Hmm. Oh god, and that was a trailer. You don't even you didn't even see Jade's face. She was just sitting under a sun umbrella, and obviously. You know, the game got so far away from that that Jade wasn't even in the original re-release of right. re-reveal, which was insane. Do I need to go play that game, the original? It's good. Well, based on ratings information, this uh, there's a 20th anniversary edition coming soon, so. Well, I have the original. I've just, I think I started it and I just, I was expecting Zelda and I got something else and, and uh, never it's went like back Zelda. to it. Instead of finding a new item in a dungeon, though, you find a sweet photo op. Oh, that's that sounds kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they still had bosses and stuff. Boy, Sean, we just went all around the circle oh, here for yeah, your yeah, Sean. <laughs> uh, I actually no, I do think Sean is somewhat correct. Xbox does seem to still have the problem when they had the burns to some of these games they announced uh, long ago. But like for instance, PlayStation, we don't know any official games past Spider Man Two and Helldivers Two. Oh, I guess well, I guess they announced the are free to play fair games or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's not as over as I thought, but I think I think he's, I think more people are trending to what Sean is talking about. I still personally prefer the Elder Scrolls Six method of like, yes, we are working on this game. We will see you when it is done, and then never talk about yeah. it again until you have yeah. actually something to show. Yeah. You know, as long as you're not like constantly supporting the hype, I don't care. I just right. just tell me what you're working on. Like, like there's no sense in playing a secret game about what Sucker Punch is working on. We all know it's Ghost of Tsushima too, right? So just say yes, we're working on that. We'll we'll have more to share when we're ready. You know, like you don't need to. People get all weird. They're like, man, oh, oh I'm never going to hear about Elder Scrolls 6. It's been so long. I'm like, what do you care, though? Like, you know, it's, they're working on it, and they'll show you when it is nearer to done. And there's plenty more to play. That's a, yeah. you know, I, I was just thinking about this recently. Like, I, I you know, we kind of have this worry that the gaming industry is moving towards it being this games as a service model and these single player story driven Games are going to eventually go by the wayside. We're going to be the old guys in the retirement homes. Like, back in my day, I used to sit down games and play had a, a game. story. I had, a, I had to play by myself. And, there and used to be endings. Could you believe it? There was something called credits at the end of the game, <laughs> just like in a movie. Uh, <laughs> it feels me weird, me being the one doing the old man voice as the old man in the room. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> even if that does happen, I feel like... I'm of the age where it'll be okay because right. there's going to be so much for me to just go back and play all these games I never have before. There, there, there's, there's no way I could play every story-driven game I've ever wanted to. I mean, the, right. the JRPGs alone would keep me occupied for years. 10 years. You know, <laughs> like, so mm-hmm. we're going to be, we're going to be good. And not for nothing, man, there's quite a bit of joy in replaying games you love. Yeah. I, I went back, I just talked about it earlier today. I'm, was playing Mario Odyssey. That just was was great, and that's not even that old of a game. Right. But going back to the well and playing, uh, you know, some old Super Nintendo games. I'm I'm playing Streets of Rage two for a Patreon episode. That's and I've that that's very old game. So yeah, I am uh, I'm more leaning on the side of um this being a thing. I'm actually w- with Sean. I am kind of noticing it as well. You're always going to have the huge names that are going to be giving something way in advance, but I'm. Like Zach, just tell me you're working on it, and and that's it. And don't acknowledge it right. again. Yeah, exactly. I'll see, I'll, yeah, I'll see you again when it's ready. Because I don't need to hear anything about it if there's nothing to tell. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. I'm I'm focusing on everything else, and I'm good. But I actually prefer like, this. You know, the the fact that like su- I keep coming back to Super Mario Wonder. Well, okay, I'll I'll switch it. Mario RPG. Heard about it that same announcement. It comes out in what November? So, you know, I like. I feel like I'm not waiting years and years for games anymore. I hear about it, I get to play it in less than half a year, you know, and make make room for it while it's still fresh in my mind. I, I feel like that's going to be the the strategy moving forward because instead of it being like a hype for years kind of thing and then have to fight with delays, 
and all that. Just wait till it's done and wait till you have a lot to show. Wow, everybody, right. and then release it while they're still thinking about it and still in the back of their mind instead of, oh, yeah, I remember Hellblade 2 was, was announced. I don't even know what that game is anymore. Like from a gameplay standpoint. Well, every time they show it off, they just show a cutscene. So I have no, I have no idea right. what the game is. Right. Why is that game not out? I have. It, yeah, I don't know. Unless it is like a God of War scope game, you know, being just made with the te- the team that they have because they're you know kind of a smaller studio. That's the only re- way I could think of why it would be that long of a development. I, I, the first game was what twelve hours or something like that, and it wasn't like super. Oh, for, it was like six hours, right? Was it that short? It was not a long. It was just game. like a. It was like a downloadable thirty dollars game or something. Like mm-hmm. that. Crazy. All right, <laughs> Sean. Thanks for the uh, conversation started there. We went all, <laughs> all over the place. Um, Shout out to Blossom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zach, why don't you go ahead and take the next one on Discord? Sure. Uh, over on Discord, Mark Zemanski writes in question for each of you: What game failed to meet lofty expectations? What game surpassed the hype? Uh, Journey. <laughs> Failed to meet your lofty expectations? Dude, I was so stoked for Journey, just hearing... I remember specifically listening to Garnet Lee. That's how long ago that game came out wow. uh, on, on his podcast. I think it was One Up Yours at that point, or was yeah. it yeah. Weekend Confirmed? And just hearing him talk about this game and just the way that you interacted with real people without actually talking to them and communicating with clicks and beeps and on this epic journey that just felt so beautiful and artistic. And I played the game, and I just moved forward with the joystick for like three hours. I know that's a very minimalist explanation of that game, but I have, I have, that is the first one that comes to mind in a game that I was so hyped and I heard everybody talk so positively about that game, and I just did not get it. And I think I promised back with years ago to go back and retry it when they released it on PS4, and I never did. I should probably go back and do that at some point, but Journey is my uh, uh, one that did not meet. Surpass. Uh, it's it's kind of not fair since I'm still in the middle of playing it. But Sea of Stars, <laughs> I expected to love this, to really like this game. I did not expect to love it. It is way more than what I expected it to be. I just expected it to be a decent JRPG that reminded me of Chrono Trigger. But they've given a fantastically fresh experience while scratching the nostalgia itch at the same time. Anybody else? Oh, I I got a few. Okay. Um, fail, games that failed to meet the hype. Oh, and I'm going to catch some flack. Okay. Oblivion. I, I'm with you. I have not said so, Oblivion. I know. I there, know there's, there's people that still mm, absolutely adore. Um, I but, tried. I, I just could not wrap my head around how that game worked. Um, uh, for Elder Scrolls games, man, I, I love Morrowind. I love Daggerfall. Oblivion, you know, Skyrim, back on top for me. Um, so yeah, Oblivion, just no. Huh. Um, Lemon Escape. Uh, Whoa. Yeah. Sorry, you guys killed oh, that I one. Felt that, I felt that one. I felt that one in my gut, bro. Because yeah. here's the thing: after years of hype from you two, and then I finally played. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this game sucks. Well, keep in Whoa. mind too, we played it in like this bite-sized chunk at E3. And it was like something we had never seen before. Yeah, yeah no, it, it 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 lived up to the hype, man. That game was awesome. Awesome. Was awesome. Maybe for you guys. For me, no. Sorry. Because I mean, you awesome, guys are but... like, you're going to love this game when it comes out. You're going to love it. This is your kind of thing. And I was like, I really I thought that Cere- he, he Cerebral was. games just aren't for everybody, you know? And not everybody <laughs> wants to. <laughs> I do, but it, it just, it didn't click for me. It was. No, I know. I know. Um, Games that surpassed the hype, though. Yeah, Alien Isolation. Alien Fireteam Elite. Oh. I... Well, you didn't think you were going to like it that much at all. No, I thought I was going to hate that game. I was like, yeah. well, it's going to be there for the lore, because I, I I, remember talking about it on the podcast, I'm like, well, I'll check it out. Bro, I love that game. I know you did. It, it's, I read your review about it. I, oh, wait. Still working on it, man. It's it's hard to put. Lo- remember, to remember put that time I said. Remember that time I said you should write your review I'm, before Starfield I'm, comes out. I I used a string of obscenities, which I cannot repeat on this <laughs> podcast. It's family friendly. Um, <laughs> not this episode. Nah, uh, we've cut it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, that that I hate XCOM style games because I I just uh, it doesn't really click for me. That one. Mm. Ah, the Alicious. 
<laughs> Delicioso. Hey, I learned that word. Yeah, it's a real tricky one. <laughs> I'm just saying, I've been learning Spanish like you guys have been learning other languages, so. Shout, uh, are out, you... shout out to uh, my first restaurant job when uh, I was trying to learn Spanish from the nice lady. And I was like, oh, hey, what do you call a, a mop in Spanish? She said, uh, El Mapo. And then I kept saying that for years, and I no doubt uh, looked racist at every job after that. Uh, that is hilarious. She set me up, man. Poor Zach. <laughs> Fell into oh the trap. Oh, my gosh. I did fall into the trap. I was just trying to be nice. I was trying to... I try to culture myself. You know, now you're making me worried because when I used to work at the at the bank, I had a Spanish speaking teller that I asked her to tell me how to say thanks for choosing this bank. Uh, have a nice day. <laughs> this and I said it to every. Well, I wasn't <laughs> going to say the name of the bank, but um. No, I know, I know. And uh, and I said it to like every customer, like from that point on. And I wondered now. You now you're making me nervous. Hey, man. She said, "If you if that teller set you up, more the power to them." That sounds it's well. It's good knowing, break. knowing the little bit that I know about Spanish, I feel like I'm okay. I feel like yeah. What what you know? It makes sense with. I actually See, made that I, connection yesterday, but in hindsight, I'm like, I should really have double checked El Mapo. But I'm like, with, with <laughs> just 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 to like cover our bases, I'm actually googling like what El Mapo to... is because in case you decided to say something that well, I'm like. Oh, well, I thought because so many of them like like delicioso. It's well, that's so close to delicious, right? Yeah, right. So I just thought it was like that. I was wrong. So, and she said this is the complete straight face. <laughs> yeah, to you, yeah. oh yeah, it's El Mapo. What is it, CB? <laughs> uh, well, first off, um, a mop in Spanish is mapa. Ma, I was okay. That's pretty close. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't think mapo is anything because I cannot right. find it in my <laughs> dictionary. So she. So if this was intentional on her part, and I didn't just mishear, that is such a clever way to make me look like a jerk because it's so close and I would just refuse to use the right word. <laughs> you just look like a completely uneducated yeah, white like guy. Yeah, like a dumb, yeah. dumb American, absolutely. Someone trying to make fun of their but language. Like, but like, that's that's how I think. <laughs> yes. I was like, you're like, yeah, I, I had this story where this old lady taught me this and I'm like, oh God, I must look this up now. <laughs> make, sure I make sure we don't have to censor it in, uh, uh, in other languages. <sighs> Oh, that's funny. Boy, did we, we are on this, we should just call this episode <laughs> Rabbit Trails, because we're. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you out, CB, or did you have more on your list? Oh, no, no, I'm good for now. I want right, to hear, hear some others. Well, with me, I don't really get hyped or excited about a lot of things. I've mentioned this before. It's just, it doesn't happen, so I right. haven't really. What's the really... point of being excited in life, I understand? I know. I'm just, what, like the great Spike Spiegel said, whatever happens, happens. Anyway. um. I don't really get excited or hyped for anything, so if I play a game and I don't enjoy it, I wasn't expecting to like it probably in the first place, so it's not a huge disappointment unless I paid money for it. Then I'm like, I wasted money. Um, but if I love a game, it's a pleasant surprise, and I, I'll gush about it then, but I don't really have set expectations for anything, so I can't really say a game went under my expectations. Um, a lot of games I review for the site, you know, I absolutely end up loving, like, A Space for the Unfound, This Way Madness Lies. Um, I'm not reviewing it, but again, Sea of Stars, I didn't really know what to expect going in, and I loved it within 10 minutes. So, mostly it's just, you know, I play a game and that's when I find out if I like it or I don't. I'm not really hyped or excited about it to begin with. So you're really taking this whole like uh, positive approach to game reviews, like to heart and and then some. This whole like, there's no such thing as a bad game. There's no such thing as a disappointing game. Just games just that to, I don't play. Just, just games that I don't play. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. I think like there's a healthy viewpoint. Don't don't preset your expectations. That's smart. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not knocking her at all. I think it's yeah. actually really awesome because she's never gonna be let down. Right. Well, I was, I was also taught at a young age to not get too excited about things. So. That's kind of one reason why I don't get really excited about stuff. But. Right. Well, enough people let you down in life, you know, you learn that video games don't have to, too. Yeah, it, 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 that's been a constant in my life, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's one thing that will never not live up to my expectations. Hmm. Puppies. It was, it was... Puppies. I Puppies. See, I see dogs, man. I get excited. Oh, boy. Are we? Are we Zach was going to say something. I am both people. 
It's funny. Not... You, it's funny you say that, CB, because uh, next week's topic is going to be something to do with what you just referred to about dogs and cats, oh. puppies. Oh, uh, you have to wait and see. Two oh, no, it's not. Not next week, but the the week after. Sorry. Oh, because I I, I won't be here. <laughs> no, oh. well, you'll you'll be there for that one. So, Zach, what about you? Dog Games that. Uh... Uh, re- a recent one that comes to mind is because because I, I feel like I've been doing a lot better about not getting excited for things because it does it does just kind of betray your expectations. But one where I failed on that would be Final Fantasy 16. I was very excited for this game. Uh, and while it is okay, uh, it really did disappoint me in a lot of ways. And I, I don't even think it's going to be my top 10 at the end of the year, probably. Mm. Uh, and that's a big bummer. But on the other side of that coin, a game that surpassed the hype, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Because mm. I, I was mm-hmm. over, I was very excited for that game. I mean, who couldn't be, right? I mean, a remake of Final Fantasy 7 looks gorgeous. And uh, Square Enix actually... You know, saw what Cyber Connect was doing in the original version, be like, no, 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 that's not, that's not good enough. And they mm. brought it in house. You know, you kind of respect that move. And then it was even better than I had hoped it would be, uh, because because of the the way they took the their remake concept really, yeah, uh, was unique. And I really respect the absolute balls on Square Enix for uh, for that remake. And yeah, yeah so it surpassed hype in uh, every way. It's actually, almost like the game had a rebirth. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually <laughs> does uh, bring up a good point because uh, one of the, uh, one of the other ones I just I remembered, uh, Resident Evil Two Remake. That oh game, yeah, that game like went above and beyond what I expected. That's true. Yeah, we were all excited for that one. Yeah, one it, of the coolest E three demos I've ever been to as well. <laughs> you got to go through a haunted house first. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But when it came out, oh, I'm, I'm wearing the cool. sh- I'm wearing the shirt I got from it right now. Oh yeah, look at oh, that. That, yeah. that is. Oh, that's such a cool shirt. Yeah. I love the blood splatter. <laughs> uh, did you have another one, Zach, or was that it? Oh, no, that's, that's just what came to mind, yeah. All right, Alyssa, you are up. Beerus74 says, Terrible online sessions. What are some of your most toxic experiences? What are your feelings about being able or not to enjoy playing with strangers? I don't know if that sounded right. You know what I mean. <laughs> Who wants to start? Uh, uh, I don't play online with people usually. Um, what I do is my friends, and I really haven't had any toxic experiences um, because I just don't play with strangers. <laughs> I have had friends yell at me, which kind of scarred me a while for well, from playing multiplayer. Um, what do they yell at you for? Just, you know, playing Call of Duty or Battlefield or something, and, you know... I'm the one that sucks at it, so, you know, it's kind of like holding the team back. Uh, makes me think about P.E. back in elementary and middle school, where people <laughs> yelled at me, and I'm like, that scarred me for life. No. Now I'm traumatized again. <laughs> That's what games are missing nowadays. Instead of just putting you in random lobbies, do a pick-your-teammates thing so somebody gets picked last. I was always picked last because I'm not athletic. Yeah. Um, But I had a wonderful experience with you, Scott, playing uh, golf, with, golf with your friends with <sighs> the group. We need to do that again. That was so much fun. Because no one was judging me. Everyone was so nice. Um, that was my, mo- I guess, my most toxic experience is just having people kind of like yell at me, and I don't like being yelled at. <laughs> yeah. So it it just makes me sad, and then I don't want to do it again. So fair enough, Zach. Oh man, well I could t- say one thing I enjoyed about being playing with strangers is meeting people, you know, and getting to know them, like uh, Scott Clark. Yeah, That's I don't true. think we. Be podcasting together right now if it weren't for Gears of War. Correct. Yeah. So uh, the thing I miss most from multiplayer games is uh, lobbies that kept you in the same group. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really think the reason I play a lot less multiplayer games than I used to because I used to play quite a bit. You know, who didn't you know play Gears of War or Halo online and stuff is the fact that it's always matchmaking and it's always strangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if you had the option to just hang out in the lobby and actually meet some people. And and you know, uh, you it wouldn't be the same anyway, I guess, because everyone has party chat and private chat and Discord. Right. So the the people who are probably left talking in a group are probably the people who have like their boombox playing in the background or some kid crying or <laughs> yeah. you know some kind of disastrous thing. But but for those brief fruit few years on Xbox Live when it was just you had to play in lobbies and you had to chill and you didn't want to you didn't want to sometimes you might be playing later than you want to because you don't want to let down your team you know because you've been on a hot streak and you're like I got to go to bed for work but. You know, we're, we're, we're killing, I can't, 
one yeah, more. one more, guys. Yeah, I'll, I'll stick it around for one more, guys. Then you lose, so then you're like, well, okay, we got to do one more. That we, we can't we end on a loss. Well, yeah. And then you win, you're like, well, we got to do one more, guys. We're on the hot streak. Can't, <laughs> can't leave while we're winning. <laughs> it's a vicious cycle. <laughs> yeah, there's no winning. So that's, uh, that's yeah, that's that's what comes to mind for me. Uh, I can tell a tax story, but it probably requires to give a two minute fast forward warning to everybody. Uh, if you have children, if you have children or family, fast forward two minutes. I can tell you a brief story about Uno. Oh, I think mine is, <laughs> uh, mine is the same one. That's it was what mine was going to be. Is Uno okay? Yeah, fast fast forward two minutes because I was on Uno and you know it always has these video chats. You're always seeing people bang or whatever. It's it was no big deal, but there was this guy once he was eating chicken wings, just going ham on him, just. <laughs> Making these really gross chewing noises in the oh, mic and no. stuff, and everybody was giving him a hard. That. Everyone was giving him such a hard time. So then he just he pulled over and he mooned this the webcam. We're like, okay, yeah, that's pretty standard. But then he takes the chicken drum sixty eight and he starts ramming it up his butt. Oh ah! my goodness! So he's banging himself with a chicken drumstick. Oh, um, how? Then, but he was not done eating it. Ew. Oh. Oh, oh my god! Apparently, the people that play Uno are disturbed individuals. I am not Dude. going to be sharing this podcast with my students. Uh. I, I, I gave a fast forward warning. Oh yeah, because kids are going to listen to that. Oh, well, Mr. <laughs> uh, Clark yeah. said to fast forward, so I'm going to fast forward. <laughs> They're very respectful. Prepare to fast forward. Fast forward. Uno, uh, Uno is filled with degenerates. Oh, uh, that was going to be mine as well. I will never forget the first time we had a party, uh, and it was it was one of those parties where everybody was you know had quite a bit to drink. And a bunch of people were hanging out. It was just a small group of us hanging out in my basement, literally right there. And the TV was right there. Oh, we had uh, chips. Huh? Oh, we had chips and <laughs> drinks. <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm not a good host. Um, <laughs> and we're just sitting around watching me play Uno. And we're just sitting there, and it was, it was starting to really wind down. And we're all, like, getting tired and starting to sober up a little bit. And you know when you sober up, you, you don't feel great. You, know, you, you want to... You want to keep going to keep that buzz going, but you don't. But you also need to drive home and whatnot. And all of a sudden, you know, watching this camera on there, and you can guess which body part wound up on that little camera. And of, uh, ma- of male anatomy, of I male presume. anatomy, yes. And I was like, everybody just woke up and was like, "Did we just see that?" It was, it was, and it was a situation where he showed this on there, and then just immediately logged off before anybody could like. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, welcome anything. to the female experience. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. It Do you guys remember uh, chat PlayStation's <laughs> your uh, PlayStation's Playroom? I remember. I never. Room? I never used it. But they shut it down so quickly because it was just everybody was just banging on there. <laughs> it's crazy. You g- give uh, humanity access to show their genetic anatomy to yep. uh, strangers. They absolutely will take advantage of that. Yeah. Reddit is proof of that. I, well, I love Reddit. <laughs> Reddit, you can find whatever you you're looking for. That's yeah, that's true. All right, who's up? Alyssa, are you up? I believe oh. I just read. Oh, she doesn't play multiplayer. You, you didn't ask about mine. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, yeah, CB. All right, CB. Go I, ahead. I am the degenerate. You are the one? <laughs> You're flipping your wing out there? No, 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 how, not that. How bad. dare you, CB? <laughs> no, that um, wasn't his. I would have recognized it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I actually go out of my way to make sure that I don't have a toxic experience. Like, I will auto mute people. Right. Um, but that being said, like some, some early, like, wow, things like, oh, we had a long night of rating. It didn't end well, but I have procured a wide variety of friends who are very, very good at multiplayer gaming. So if somebody gives me a hard time, I make a phone call and I make people's lives a living hell. Oh no. What? You're not talking about like swatting or something, are you? No. So a criminal. So there was somebody who uh, decided to grief me one time on uh, Thief of Thieves. Uh, sea of Thieves. Wow. <laughs> thief of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. <laughs> um, it's not, it's not a bad. Had, game. A, had a little little mini stroke there, I guess. Uh, no, one of this this guy just kept giving me a hard time playing, so I made a phone call, and three of my friends logged on, and for the next two hours, we proceeded to hunt this person. <laughs> relentlessly like, you mean? oh you got a new ship no you didn't oh we're gonna harpoon <laughs> you and we're gonna attach you to the front of our boat and we're gonna f- go around oh you got off oh you got a new boat no you didn't we destroyed it 
And it got to the point that this person started sending messages to all of us like, can you please stop? And I'm like, you started this game. We're ending it. But can't he just log out and just go to a different server or something? Oh, that's funny because you know that whole thing where like you log off and it's like, oh, look, person that you recently played with is still playing. Yeah, they can just block you, can't they? in. Here we come again. You've told me stories about griefing people in, in online games as well. Oh, yeah. Like uh, on PC games. I'm like, really? You're that guy? <laughs> he is. I do not start the war, but I will finish it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving along. Drew Ross says, holiday TV and movie traditions. What are some TV and movies you enjoy watching on or around different holidays throughout the year? Um, I have started trying to watch Planes, Trains, and Automobiles at Thanksgiving, because I feel like that's the only Thanksgiving movie there is. Um, I, I love that movie. And I, I think I bought it just for that reason. Like, I bought it digitally so I could watch it every year. Because it's one of those where if you try to buy it at Thanksgiving, all of a sudden the price is way more expensive because they know people are like, oh, I, you know, I should watch that movie. And, uh, yeah, that's a new tradition. What about you guys? Uh, for me, on Christmas... Every year, without fail, like, ever since I've been a kid, uh, my family will go to TBS, the cable channel, and watch A Christmas Story over and over and over, because it plays for 24 hours straight. Still? It oh, still yeah. does. So, that's the Christmas movie. I don't really watch certain movies or TV shows around holidays on a schedule. I just kind of am a mood watcher, but I've noticed the past two years, for some reason, I watched Train to Busan around Halloween two years in a row and I've seen this maybe three times now. I don't know why I'm doing it to myself, but I mean it's it's a great movie. So. I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Um it is Korean, but uh it's great. It's my favorite zombie movie actually now. But Nice. Zach? Nope. Nothing? I don't I don't chew I don't really care about any holidays, so I don't really feel the need to attune what I'm watching to them. Oh, I have a stack, dude. Every, I have a stack of Christmas movies every year that I go through. Like, yeah, like, I've, you know, I think it'd be nice if there were like some horror game I wouldn't mind playing every October or something, but I don't know. I just don't. I, just, well, I feel like I usually get... What's that? We're doing Dead Space 3, remember? Oh, yeah. We might, yeah. See if we pull that off. If we, if we stick with it. <laughs> In October, the busiest October uh, I know, ever. right? And I gotta play it like th- 2 in the morning. We're also doing a convention. It. Yeah, it's all going to work out. Yeah, great. it's going to be great, man. <laughs> Let's stop in. Uh, uh, for me, I, I have the trilogy of Christmas movies. Only three? Oh, the, the, no, there's there's others, but there's three that can, have to get watched. Can I guess? Years. Sure. Uh, Christmas Vacation. No. Really? Home Alone. No. Home Alone. No. Wow. Um, well, and I'm just... Die Hard's number lethal, one. God. Lethal Weapon. Nope. Lethal Weapon 2. No. <laughs> kiss, the, kiss, bang, bang. The ref. Man, you guys are going like farther and farther. What's, what other shame? Like Iron Man 3. Krampus. Oh, yeah, Krampus. Is that already a classic? I feel like the game oh, dude, that I one came want, out three years ago. Since that movie ago. has come out, I have watched it every single Christmas. It had, once. It had to be more than three years, right? It's like six. Yeah. It? It's, it's been yeah. out for a bit. Dude, yeah. I, I love it. I think that movie's great. And then Gremlins. Oh, okay. yeah, Gremlins. So, love those. But I have two other movies that I watch very specific time every year, beginning of baseball season. Moneyball. Such a good movie. And A League of Their Own. Okay. There's no crying in baseball. Nope. Moneyball is an Dude, Moneyball insanely is such rewatchable. An it is such a rewatchable movie. I watch it multiple times and never get tired of it so good uh, i will say i've added to my rotation at christmas 8-bit christmas i just love that movie i watch it with my students i think it's great although <laughs> i almost got in trouble last year because my students were watching it and there's a line in the movie where the dad says to says to the kid cr- says to the kid cry in a bucket and the kids heard something different and went home and told their parents that i showed them a movie that had the f word in it so that was fun. Oh. So kids are stupid? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. It's like, guys, it says cry in a bucket. It wasn't even like, it, it wouldn't have even made sense. Right, at all. At all. 
Yeah. You know, so just just for you, Scott, I think this year I'll add Die Hard two to the list as well. You know what? <laughs> I'm not getting. I'm not falling into that argument. I'm not, <laughs> oh, he's a. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're a, not doing Die it. Die Hard's not a Christmas. Not movie. doing it. All right, Chris, you're up. Uh, Tim Thane, because I've got nothing better. This may be covered in the main show, but see if we as far as of recording, how many hours have you put into Starfield thus far? You um, did answer that. About twenty. Yeah. There, there was an over under on eighty. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> that's a little high of an over under, or is it? Or yeah, is it's it? Not. He had to have time I, to write his. If uh, I, if I didn't review. have a uh, twenty four hour, if I didn't have to work for twenty four hours, go to a wedding and do some other things, I. I be at 80. It, it would have been at least 40. <laughs> what, well, that one was kind of a gimme. Why don't you go ahead and do the next one? All right, all right. Paul Hine, got, we went from Thane to Hine. Um, has there been a game in recent memory last three to four years that has grabbed you so hard, the next thing you know, you've sunk 60, 70, 80 hours in? Maybe start New Game Plus right away. For me recently, that was uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Before that, it was Cyberpunk, but other than those two, I haven't really had anything grab me so hard that I've held to compulsively crank through them. Granted, I've had two kids in between those two releases, so there might be something with it. Yes. I have a feeling my answer is going to be the same as CB's. What's that? Finding of Isaac. No. But no? that one did. Yes, that one did hit me real hard. But there was, uh, there was two that hit okay. me harder. Elden Ring. Okay. Elden Ring like consumed my soul for a while. <laughs> um, and Fallout Four. Really? Oh my god! I three was three was way more compelling for me. I actually played through that game twice to get all the achievements. I built multiple things. Yeah, I did. Well, that's four. definitely not in the last three or four years. Though. Okay, so last three or four years. That was eight years ago. Fallout Four. Jesus. Um, Isn't that insane. That's yeah. insane, right? It's crazy. Um, most definitely though, uh, Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah. Eld- Elden Ring hit like nobody's business for me. And yeah, Binding. I guess yeah, Binding of Isaac. Yeah, I put a stupid amount of hours. Oh, I think Star- Final Stardew Valley. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> At least two hundred hours. I think Final Fantasy VII Remake was one for me because I think that game came out. When did that come out? Was that an April release? Or it came out around April twentieth. Yeah. I want to say it yeah, was. Yeah, it was like it was March or April, somewhere around there. Yeah. But I feel like there was a break in school for me when that game came out, or was it? I don't think. Fantasy... Spring Break. I I'm pretty sure it came out in March. Was it Could March twentieth? Yeah, it was March. March twentieth. Okay. I, th- I maybe I have the twentieth wrong, but I remember like that's just all I did that spring break or whatever time I had off was played Final Fantasy seven, and that that was a lengthy, that was a meaty RPG, like maybe. 30 hours, I want to say? 30, 35? Oh, but we're talking 60, 70, 80 hours. I mean, there's nothing re- that within the last three to four years that I've That's played That's not through. true, bro. Vampire Survivors. I don't think I put 80 hours into that. Oh, okay. I thought you did, like, everything. I did, but you it didn't can. take 80 hours. But it, it does get to a point in that game where if you know the formula... Yeah. Oh, man, I just thought of another one. But, but even knowing the formula doesn't mean he wasn't playing it. I've, I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong. Dead Cells. I don't know if there's a way to track it. But... Dead Cells, yeah. You did play that I a put us. Yeah. I'm still putting hours. Like I put a stupid amount of hours in Dead Cells. Did you play the Castlevania? No, but I did just get a physical version of it. Nice, nice. Alyssa, what about you? Did you have any? I have two I can think of. One, I put in over 200 hours in it before I dropped it, and that was Animal Crossing New Horizons um, during 2020. Mm-hmm. And then... Pandemic a banger. I can't remember when Judgment was released, the first one. That might have been more than four years ago, but I know I put in 70 to 80 hours into that one. Was it the Japanese game? Yeah, it's a spinoff of the Yakuza mm-hmm. series, or the Like a Dragon series now. They've renamed it. Um, Yakuza is a better name anyway. It is, but they're trying to distance themselves from that. Crime. Yeah, from crime, so they renamed it to Like a Dragon. Uh, but yeah, I was in love with that game. I still haven't played the sequel for some reason, but I love Judgment, so I put a lot of hours into that one as well. Okay. Uh, do we get everybody? Or no, we need to do Zach, right? 
yeah, I mean, there was release in the last three, four years. I, don't know, I guess Elden Ring, but, you know, I was just getting that platinum, so it just took a while. Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say Red Dead Redemption 2, obviously I played at the beginning of the year, put over 120 hours in, and already want to replay it. So I feel like that, that counts, but it yeah. wasn't released three uh, or four years ago. But you did play it in the last. Yeah, but I, I already want to put in another 120 hours, absolutely. Tahiti. It's just so, it's so good. Yeah, got to get to Tahiti, bro. I'm yeah. sure there's an alternate ending, right, where I can get to Tahiti. Spe- speaking of which, I, I watched a, a TikTok video on Red Dead 2 the other day where uh-huh. somebody decided to max out the amount of money that you can put into the coffer. Oh yeah. To see if you if you could just if there's like some weird glitch that you could ever get uh Dutch to just shut up. That would and it's awesome. like he maxes out the money and Dutch is like, We need more money. All right. And I'm just like, You have all the money. <laughs> need to all contribute, of- Arthur. I was like, this is fun. It, but it was <laughs> it was a funny little project that somebody did. I'm like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And he had yeah, to yeah, actually I- put it in in like twenty dollar increments because like with that amount of money on the scale yeah, he would put it in, and it would just start subtracting money off. <laughs> That's funny. A hell of a co- hell of a commitment maxing that out. Yeah, but yeah, I, I absolutely want to start it again, but I'm not allowing myself to. Mm. Yeah, I got other stuff to play. So next year, I'll I'll play it. All right, Zach, over on Twitter. Sure, uh, positivity counts at positivity count one. What's your favorite local spot? Tell me why you like it. It could be a restaurant, bar, or store. Chain big box stores do not count. Oh boy. Do you want to go um, burger, Scott? I mean, beefaroo. I mean, right? Like that's hell, hell yeah. Well, it's not local to me anymore. Ah, but it is a chain now. That's true. Well, oh yeah. Sorry, you lose it. Like I said, Scott. Damn, that do, is. Do you want to go for burgers? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. For those who know what that means, congrats. Hidden uh, Easter egg. Hit us up on Discord if you want, or on uh, DM if you want to. Yeah. Anyway, no. Um, speaking of burgers. Uh, Buddy's Burgers in Rockford is like the best burger I've ever eaten. It's just, it's a small little place. I wouldn't even call it a sports bar. Uh, it's just a, it's just a burger place that has sports memorabilia on the wall. It is best burger in town. As far as bars, I mean, I, old Chicago is a franchise, so that doesn't yep, count. Can't use it. So you will, you will try local restaurants if it's in your hometown, just not when we're traveling together. Well, you yeah, have chicken support, fingers. I gotta support yes. Rockford, man. Yeah, but you but no, you, well, you also have to support Subway apparently when you're traveling. <laughs> I just like Subway. Actually, it was yeah, Taco oh. Bell we went to like three times. Well, in. yeah, well, that's obvious. I mean, that's come on, that's universal. Everybody loves Taco. <laughs> You'd be surprised. I, would, uh, I, I gotta think of a bar other than Subway. I mean, I liked Carlisle back in the day, but I heard they're closing again. Yeah, and they changed their 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 uh, formula. Um, Prairie Street's a little too bougie for me. I like Prairie Street. I just don't like their beer. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, but their food is great though. Generations on Freeport. Yeah, that works. Well, Alyssa, you got anything close by you? Um, there's a lot of chain places here, and I'm not a fan of this town to be honest. So, um, I do not have a favorite local place. Um, I'm just kind of if it, anyone ever wants to go out somewhere local, I'm just like. You pick it. I don't care. I I don't like anything here. So. Oh wow! Oh, you know what? I'm gonna take change mine. There is a place in Pearl City, which is west of us, called the Bruin Chew, which is pretty <laughs> clever. I'm not making okay. it up. It's called the Bruin Chew, and yeah. it just looks like a hole in the wall kind of place. But their food is great. They have a great beer selection. And then when you're done, you can go two miles down the road. I'm not making this up. There's a bar down the road called the Slurp and Burp. Not making that up. You guys love your rhymes around there. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan of that place as the Brew and Chew. It's it's you know it's just a bar, but uh, the food is outstanding. I had Nashville chicken there the first time I went there, and it was oh legit. yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, that's kind of spicy. Are you a spicy food fan? I love spicy chicken, especially. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it's either um... oh god, like I just I this is the second time tonight. I've kind of had a little. Huh. <laughs> You, uh, a little, moment. you have a starfield strokes? Is that what yeah, those I guess are? so. <laughs> Brain, brain's still in the sea. Uh, the, the, the pig, pig beer. Pig beer. Pig, pig mines. Pig mines, yes. Yeah. Pig mines, 
I, I like the, the place. It's a little kind of cool. It's a little eclectic. It's all, it's all vegan food, isn't it? Yeah, vegan food, vegan beer. Which is funny because it's called Pig Minds. But yeah, it's that, that's vegan. part of the joke. Um, <laughs> love there. Um, Jam Cane Upon. Oh, yeah. yeah I haven't dude, been I, there in a long time. Dude, love that place. Mm-hmm. Like a, My mom says she's gonna take me there when I when I visit in October, oh. which means it won't happen. But the idea of it's oh. great. Oh, dude! For those that aren't from go. here, Nippon is a is one of those Japanese restaurants where you have like the huge grill and everybody sits it's around. Better Benihana. And... There you go. Yeah, it's, it's a hibachi, right? Hibachi isn't it? What yeah. it is? Yeah. yeah. I've only been to a hibachi place once, but that was a good experience. Why don't so we all go? go? When you guys dude, are I'm here, down. why don't we all go to? I'm only Nippon's. gonna be there for a day and a half, so. Oh, we got time. We'll find yeah, a way. Should go to Nippon's. It's it's an experience. You, we could you go there for it. like dinner the night before R two V two. That'd be like our R two V two, you know, dinner before this before the storm hits. I mean, we could do that. I'm okay. Let's with do that. it. Yeah. I'm down. That sounds great. Uh, okay. I've been. I already know my mom is gonna let me down. So, ah, so I mean, she those, can come if she wants to. Those two, sure. And then I'll, I'll later. also, uh, I I don't think you've been Scott, but uh, the baseball tap down in Cherry Valley. I have not. No. Little tiny hole in the wall bar. Great cheese curds. Wow. wow. All right. Does any place in town serve good poutine? Olympic Tavern. Where? Olympic Tavern. Olympic has good poutine? Okay. Oh, dude, Olympic Easy. has like killer poutine. I love poutine so much. You said that pretty immediately. Yeah. Well, as for me here in, uh, in Portland, there's a food truck down the street called Kim Jong Grillin'. I uh-huh. get their Korean fried rice every day before we record. Oh, nice. Uh, it's, my, it's my little uh, gaming outsider treat. Nice. There is a little further down a hibachi place called Tokyo Table. Uh, amazing. That's the best teppanyaki uh, I've had. Where they cook it in front of you. Uh, uh, I just had a place yesterday called Oh My Gelati. It's not technically <laughs> in Portland. So it's like 20 minutes away. I don't so, but it's, they do like, it's custard, homemade custard uh, gelato. And then they lay, they put Italian ice like layered in it as well. Oh. So it's kind of custard, you know, gelato and Italian ice. It's, it, I feel like it changed my life. It was so delicious. I want, I want more of it right now. Um, and then uh, local store, uh, when I moved here, I was warned against going to side quest games. Everybody said they were terrible and overpriced, but it's the cheapest game store, used game store I found in town. Wow. And they're actually reasonable. The, the staff is some of the most socially awkward human beings I've ever interacted with, mm. but they're, you know, they're, they're friendly once you get past that. Do they do, um, do, they do they retro it, games? They do. Yeah. You should send mm-hmm. me some pictures of what they have. Okay. <laughs> yes. You're right. I should have thought of that earlier. Uh, Man, I will that- do so, but. And next time you're in there, see if they have a copy of Menace Beach on NES or Big Nose Minute. Freaks Out on, on NES. Those are the last two I need to complete my collection. All right, I'll, I'll let you know. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, they, they, they not a lot of you know retro game stores have reasonable prices anymore. <laughs> the, the closest I could find. That one I found in Pensacola did. I was really, I was really That's true. pleasantly. Mm-hmm. That was the best organized store I've ever seen, by the way. It's awesome. We, we forgot a big one, Scott. What's that? Dairy House. Oh, Dairy House, yeah. Friend of the show. Ice cream place up in Roscoe. Uh, some of the best ice cream I've ever had. Really that good. Is it a cookie chunk? Oh. Yeah. Oh, Zach, this one's local for you. Have you been to Fried Egg I'm in Love yet? I have I have not because they didn't they're usually obnoxiously busy, so I have not gone to them. Yeah, they're busy for a reason. Those are that's the best breakfast sandwich. Second best breakfast sandwich I've ever had before. Well, I feel like any restaurant that chooses to just specialize in like one thing, like we do breakfast sandwiches, we do mac and cheese, we do mm-hmm. you know, chicken strips. They're always just constantly busy. Seems mm-hmm. like a good restaurant strategy. P- pretty much, yeah. They they really like their pesto at that food truck. Actually, they have a physical location now too. So yeah, that's that's the one I'm talking about. I didn't know they had a food truck. Yeah, that's that's, that's what like, they had first was a food truck. Well, the and food they, trucks are more often misses than hits in my experience. Yeah, yeah. Well, theirs was a food truck, but it was like a static food truck. Like it was literally yeah, yeah. on us. It wasn't even on parked on the side of the street. It was like parked like where a building would go. <laughs> you know what I mean? They even yeah, had like a kinda, seating area. That's kind of where, uh, that's what Kim Jong Grillin is about too. Yeah. yeah it's like a yeah. very static location, a little patio and everything. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Positivity counts. I appreciate the comment. Last one comes from Sean Fuller and he says, if you could carry items like a character in a game, what would you carry on you? You have six slots. And size and weight does not matter. That is a loaded question, but one of my answers would definitely be a portal gun. Um, <laughs> I just feel like that would be super uh, yeah. handy. Uh, with 
the gravity gun count too, even though I have not played Half Life? Is that just like where you pick up sure. objects? Is that what it does? Are we, or is that what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to pick items from a game? I would assume, yeah. I, I he didn't say it from a game. He just said any any items. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. If it were real life, uh, one of them would probably be a cell phone, just because. Right. You know, it, it's a little bit of everything packed into so one it's device. The, uh, it's when you walk out the door, you gotta check phone keys, wallet. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Pat down. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, I I did not prepare six in advance, but you know, port- if we're doing from games, portal gun. Probably a uh, a lancer. <laughs> if I'm gonna have a weapon, that would be my. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, weapon of choice. choice. There's a better choice. Is there? The than the fat, lancer, the fat man, Duke. Well, well he doesn't want to wipe out a town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just need something that can shoot and you know offer melee abilities as well. That's, Gunblade, that'll be my weapon. Final Fantasy eight. That's not. That that's that I love Final Fantasy eight, but that is a ridiculous weapon. So it doesn't say it doesn't need to be ridiculous. I, I feel like the Lancer is way more useful. Um, it's also awesome. Is there, I'm trying to think of what other things in games would need something for food. Is there anything that, like, I don't know. I'm thinking out loud. Help me out here, guys. What, what, what six items? Here, let's do this. There's four of us. We each pick one item, and then we discuss the last two. Instead of each doing six, that would take too long. So Master fit- Sword. Master Sword? Yeah. Heated crossbow from Half-Life 2. Okay, so you got a ranged weapon and a physical weapon. I'm going to say the portal gun. Alyssa, you need an item in the bag. I want the taser from Siphon Filter. <laughs> the taser from or Siphon Filter. Burn people, okay. Yes, right. I want to burn people. <laughs> yes! All right. Be aggressive. <laughs> Be aggressive. So we need two more items. Um, I feel like we need something provision wise. Oh, because we're not just gonna have weapons. Well, and... you can use you can use a portal gun to just rob any restaurant you want. Okay, there you go. The cell phone from Grand Theft Auto. Why specifically Grand Theft Auto? Because you can put the cheat codes in and get tanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he's thinking outside the box. Okay, big right. brain moment there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else you carry around in like Fallout or Skyrim. Oh, or... uh, we could put uh, what about two B? <laughs> you just gonna just... put two B in there? <laughs> we'll just carry her around. <laughs> there you go. All right, so we got the Master Sword. We have what was your weapon? The heated crossbow. It's like a one shot. Crossbow. It's like a one shot kill that nails people to the wall in Half Life Two. Yeah, I mean it's a cool weapon. Why don't we just say the torque bow? Wouldn't that be cooler? No. That's not what he wanted. He got to decide. <laughs> okay, you let okay. him make pick an item. Master sword, heated torque bow, taser from siphon filter, the portal gun. Um, and what were the other two? The Grand Theft Auto cell phone. Grand Theft Auto cell phone. Again, summon a ride, summon cheat codes, infinite live, infinite money. All right. And then the last object was? 2B. She's an android. <laughs> she counts as an object, right? Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. So thank you, everybody that wrote in. That was, a, that was awesome, as it is every month. Uh, next week, our, our comment is, excuse me, our topic is going to be, what got you into gaming? So what made you decide to begin, become a gamer? What, what really got you into it? Was it a specific game? Was it a specific experience? We will post that on the social, so stay tuned for that. But that's going to do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, as usual, this episode, is produced by Kevin Honningford, and all the music you hear is written and performed by Grant Henry of Stemage and Metroid Metal. His website is stemagemusic.com, S-T-E-M-A-G-E music.com. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Zach, thank you so much for being here, man. It is a pleasure as always. Do you have any parting words or recommendations for our listeners? I actually really don't this week, man. I have just been gaming, gaming it up. Yeah? Fair enough. I've been doing the same thing. CB, how about you? Thanks for being here, by the way. Yeah, always. Ahsoka, TV show. Yeah? It's okay. You were talking a lot more highly of it when we were at D&D night the other night. Was, until they decided to introduce a character that uh, shouldn't be there. Ah, fair enough. Alyssa, as always, it is a more than a pleasure. Yeah. Well, thank you recommend- for having me all the time. Yeah. Any uh, recommendations for the listeners? I do. Um, I've become obsessed with this K drama called The Glory on Netflix. Which, if you don't like reading subtitles, you're in good luck because there's an English dub and it's not too bad. Um, about a girl that gets 
horrifically bullied at school, and then when she grows up, makes it her mission to take down all the bullies, and she recruits people to help her, and every episode is just crazy, and there are cliffhangers, and I just want to know more about what's going to happen, and I'll, I'm rooting for her to get her revenge. <laughs> is she is she it's killing so them or just ruining their lives? Um, there have been some deaths, but she has not killed anyone. Okay, all right. I, as for me, I think we've talked about it in the past, but I'm gonna if I've already recommended it, I'm gonna recommend everybody to try to learn a language. Uh, we are not sponsored mm -hmm. by Duolingo, but I am still using that app, and I am shocked at the progress that I'm making. Uh, you know, it's it's really great. It's kind of fun having Alyssa, Zach, and CB all in the app with me to encourage one another and send each other celebrations and send each other gifts and whatnot. The thing that I'm finding fascinating is that I feel like learning a language is making me more empathetic for my students who are learning English because I am struggling with with things that Spanish speaking people are probably like. That is so simple. Why do you not get that? So it's making me, you know, when I'm teaching kids that are at my level of reading and understanding in Spanish, they're at that level in English, it makes me a little bit more patient with them because I am understanding what it's like to relearn at that level, at an elementary level. I'm reading sentences like, can I have the blue pen, please? You know what I mean? Like It's that simple of a sentence. So right. I encourage everybody to give it a shot. It might give you uh, an idea or a remembrance of what it's like to learn a language. Um, and come join us. I'd love to be friends with people. Anybody on Duolingo? Uh, hit me up on DMs and and we can join. It's it's really fun to be encouraging and it's weirdly competitive. It is a weirdly competitive <laughs> place to be. Um, I'm 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 doing my dailies. I'm on like a fifty something day streak. As I think I just hit fifty a couple days ago. So do that. Oh, dude, nice. I'm getting there. I haven't even used any of those like what do they call them? Get out of jail free card things where like streak thing. If you like miss one. Oh, the the like, uh, streak like keepers. freezes it or whatever. Yeah, streak freeze. Um, yeah, 50 days straight. And I don't do just the, um, like just complete one lesson and call it a day. I actually do all the challenges or quests for each day. That's like my that makes personal. Sense. You, your, your checklist personality is yeah. Uh, yeah. helping you learn a language fast. Yeah. So I, I kind of make it my daily mission to do all three of those, which it only takes about 20 minutes, if that, to do that. So I really dig it. So. And it's, and it's something better to do with your time than, you know, knocking out a dailies in a mobile game. Or like TikTok. Yeah. Dude, I have looked, I yeah. haven't looked at TikTok hardly at all this summer. I, and I've kind of been, it's like a refreshing thing. Yeah. Like I would just look up and two hours later, I just wasted two hours it's, for nothing. It's definitely waned for me. Like TikTok. Over. Yeah. It, it's got to the point that I'm like, eh, it's yeah. there. It's also fewer and far between to find stuff that's quality. Like we used to share stuff all each other with our group and it's just not anymore. So, all right, we are out of here. Finally, until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Zach Parkerson, Chris Berensmeyer, and Alyssa White, and we are The Gaming Outside. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you. Yeah.